Well, here we are, second semifinal, and we talked a lot about it. These guys know each other so well, and they are both so good. And recently, oh, Tato has been able to get... Not too long ago. What, what one was it? Not too long ago, actually. Doubt was uh, behind 2-0 and made it 3-2. Against Viper? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Like All a right. month ago or something. Oh, okay, got it. Well, they do, do your, do, your intro, do your intro again. Sorry for <laughs> No, it's all good. It's all good. I like how excited we're getting about some of the data here. But, you know, long story short, we talked about it, right? And Viper comes in here as the favorite. In the previous season, Viper met Tato in the semifinal. Best of seven. Viper won 4 one moved on to the final, where he then beat Hera 4-1, who we, of course, now know Hera has won his semifinal and is waiting now for the winner of this. So Viper's the favorite, but Tato has been insane. He had a crazy series against Doubt, who's been playing amazing with crazy strategy. And then Tato had to reverse sweep ACCM to get here. So will Tato be able to topple the stake today? We'll find out. But game one's going to be Franks for Tato. And it is Japanese for the Viper, which honestly, kind of a fun Civ matchup for this map. It is something that we have certainly not seen before, right? And Viper, he already in the quarterfinals showed that he can play civilizations that we don't consider to be the top three civs on this map and continues with that today. Overall, his draft more on the experimental side compared to what we, for example, saw from Hera. Yeah, agreed. And, and that will be an interesting talking point, I think, regardless of who wins today. When it is Hera versus the, the Viper or Tato, how much experimenting is going on? How many unique picks are we seeing? as Hera always the one who's like, oh, this is the best. Maybe he's the one who's even shown it's the best. Just try and stop me, right? Um, obviously, exception to that, I will say, is Hera's Spanish pick I really liked and the way he played mm -hmm. Spiral in his semifinal. But, you know, the Japanese... God, this is so cool. I, I don't want to get overexcited for this already, but this is what's fun about the map. You have water, which the Japanese are fantastic at, and then you have lots of berries which the Franks are great for. So we could see a situation where maybe Viper tries to dominate water a little bit more with the Japanese bonuses, and then Tato wants to take the land risk to take the berries. Mm -hmm. But berries will have to be delayed, right? Because we are opening with the dock here for Tato as well. And I feel if the Viper is opening Men at Arms, the Tato timing going for the berries would be really late. Yeah. I've never seen Man at Arms happen one time on this map, though. I think with the dock going up and the amount of fishing ships you want to add, it could be really tricky to make that happen. Agreed. But if any Sif can make it happen, it probably is Japanese. Yeah, that's true. Very fair point. It does make you think, you know, Viper's scouting really early here, right? He checks the dock, gets the information there, knows Tato sent two vills there, sees the berries, so now he knows to think about that. And I, I could see Viper going Cav Archers here as well. One of the units that Frank struggle against the most is actually Cav Archer. A lot of people might say Pikeman, but Franks can always outrun the Pikeman with their scouts and with their knights. So good Cav Archer civilizations like Huns, actually, um, on Lance Madness, we've seen a few times. Uh, you get a big mass of them. Vietnamese, uh, we even saw Koreans CA, I think, against Huns on Land Madness at one point, but I'm probably going crazy. Um, just Cav Archers in general can be good, and Viper went Vietnamese Cav Archers on Coast Mountain. He went Japanese Cav Archers at 1.2, so I could see, like, Pikeman Cav Archer being the eventual unit comp for Viper. And if he gets to both of those things, Franks could struggle here. Mm -hmm. The thing is, though, knights are so good at raiding, right? And he yeah. can, like, spread them around and can just send some knights to the top gold, some knights to the bottom gold. And Viper, he always needs to keep his CA together. So you love this ideal CA play is to be walled while the opponent is still spread pretty thin. But, but this will be a tough thing. Yeah, sorry, sorry to freak out here, but the TC position should be kind of known. Mm -hmm. um, it's It's symmetrical, right? So... I think Viper with a bit of a misplay there. Could have been much worse for him, though. Scout is weak, but he still got some crucial information here against Tato in the Dark Age. Tato clicks up, and Tato sending three villagers towards the the berry box. Huh. Mm -hmm. The berry box. And Nilly, Viper, actually adding militia right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm a bit surprised he's not sending anything on gold. Okay, now he's sending two villagers on gold. So it will be the Men at Arm and, yeah, the berry box. Might not be the greatest takeaway. Yeah. Now, Viper, we, we talked about the awkwardness of the timings here. 
was a bit housed. I uh, didn't have the wood for the timing there. And now the militia are coming out, but he might not have the exact timing with the three militia men at arms upgrade. What's Tato scouting like? Tato scouting. Oh, he sees the militia. Of course he does. Does he notice mm -hmm. it though? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah he's following it. He That's knows. a nice move. Now barracks against it. Now the big question, is he building the mill there or not? If so, then it needs to be with the tower, but T uh, Viper being out there already can obviously build a uh, tower to counter that. Yeah, Tato in Feudal Age first. And he would have wanted to go scouts, but it feels like maybe you almost want to go range here. And I, I guess Viper so far has accomplished forcing Tato away from this. And Tato just now getting the wood. He has to decide on what he builds. And still not building a building yet is a little surprising to me. Yeah. But uh, which one would be the best? Probably the archer range against the men at arms. Builds the stable far away from where the army is. Huh, so he actually hides his building. Viper's like, okay, I saw your vills. What are you going to do? I'm looking for it. I don't see it. That's actually really crucial. If Tato could squeak out a scout or two and get to Viper's base, Viper might not ever know they're coming. So Viper forcing Tato to adapt. The man at arms kind of paying off in that way. But uh, Viper won't be able to kill too much because well played from Tato. He's got some walls down for now. But full control for Viper, which I think he's going to like. Which will be nice for... No, Tato still doesn't have a mill. Oh, the same disaster that we saw two days ago, Tristan. True. With um with Free Candy against Viper. What is it? This, this thing with Viper's pressure <laughs> just delays people's mills. That's a good point. Normally, you'd have a mill already, so you could farm... But you cannot farm before a mill, and you don't want to just make a mill in no man's land. I guess that's the thing. Mm -hmm. you could technically build next to the berry bushes that are close to your town center, but that's not the ideal thing, right? 100 wood invested for 250 food. Yeah. Now Viper applying pressure with the man at arms and the scout. He knows Tata will be adding scouts. Tata's spearman is running into Viper's TC. Viper not too bothered about that. But Tato switching sides here. He is going to build a mill on the other area of berries. This is an extreme risk, but Tato Ooh. feels it's worth taking here. Ooh, that's indeed an interesting one. Okay. I don't mind it too much. I think he shift clicked in some form as well. And if he builds a tower there, he should be pretty protected. Now the big question mark, can Tato do anything with his scouts? Yeah, and does Viper expect them? Because Viper has not used his scout too much. He knows the stable exists. So he would expect it, but he may also feel Tato might not have the food for it, so who knows. Tato doing a good job in defense with archers. Moves forward with the scouts. Viper, he's kind of split right now. He's got three different areas where his eco's set up and military units are, but he does react nicely there. Walls from him at home as well. These guys are so freaking good here, Nilly. <laughs> Now, Viper only killing two spearmen here, nothing else. Let's take a look at Tato's archer defense. Yeah, just stay reasonably close to your town center and Viper will never even get a hit onto your archers. Yeah, but Viper's got archers as well. And so for Tato, he's going to need to notice this. Now, Viper's running alongside the dock. Tato, I'm sure, is paying attention, but he also has the scouts to worry about. You have the eco to worry about, and it's just not easy and I, he must have noticed he's falling back now. Mm -hmm. Blacksmith was needed for Tato here, I would think. A bit surprised that we don't have one yet. Needs to rush that one out. Okay, now builds it with two builds. Really impressive to me. Like Tato just built the mill and he's already on six farms. That is so important. Okay. Having those farms with the berry income right now that Viper doesn't know about is yeah. going to help him compete with the Castle Age time. And oh boy, Tato queuing up a demo in that dock. Viper's got to be careful there. <laughs> uh, Tato's so excited for the upcoming expansion, by the way, with the unique tech that gives you extra blast radius for demos. <laughs> he already said that's going to be his new favorite civilization. Viper does have just a tiny palisade wall on his berries. It's, it's really tricky now. But Tato could see that, and Viper just never fully built the wall. So that will be a dead villager for Viper, most likely. He could quick wall it, but that would be a, one of his craziest. And that's the first eco kill of the game. So really okay. sick hold from all this Viper pressure. So many players would have either broken and lost a lot of units, or they wouldn't have the good economy Tato does behind it. 
Yeah, and only one second RDCC time for Tato. Pretty damn smooth for all the pressure that he had to face. Only bit shaky is that he doesn't have a second lumber camp. Right and now. look where Viper's going right now. Tato's like, please fight me. Please fight me. <laughs> I do not want to lose all of these villagers. Viper just hasn't known that Tato's been over here. And now he's going to realize. And oh boy, those villagers have to get out of here. But Tato could also still win the fight. The villagers might actually help. Might soak some damage. Spearman count still at three there. Kind of tricky for Tato. Not the greatest focus fires. Oh. For now, all villagers are alive, but he needs to get away. Yeah, and like, usually the only benefit there is if Viper fights the villains and then loses all of his army. Viper was so good with the micro. He fought the army first. And now he's taking an opportunity to get the villagers. And that's four villagers of the five killed. And Viper's army still superior here. Dream scenario for Viper now. Oh man, and those men at arms are paying off together with the spearmen attacking faster. And typically, like, most of the time you see oh. a lesser player. like Oh, the... oh. Tato's like, please come kill me. Please come kill me. I'm so weak. I'm so vulnerable. Please come kill me. Oh no. Viper saw the flag. <laughs> he, he knows who he's playing against. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. A lesser player, like in the, let's say, even 2.4k area, might have invested those men at arms and tried to take a fight, tried to do some damage against the archers. But Viper actually kept them alive and they really helped out when it came to the damage output in yep. that massive fight. Yeah, Viper's eco looking pretty good. He is not walled, though. Tato aiming to get some walls down. I love Viper's expansion here. L listen, Viper's been watching, you know, some of. Our cast together in TTL doing what he calls watch alongs, right? And he watched all the quarterfinals. I think he even watched the round of 12. And so if there's ever any like weakness in Viper's understanding of the maps, which I don't think was really present come playoff time, but if it was there, he got to see it. He got to realize, oh yeah, the golds and stones. Okay, expansion there. And look at his armies. Like he is really on top of it now. And has so much good control over this game. I'm worried for Tato in Castle Age. Oh yeah, will be tricky. He has the more the better mobility here for sure. But oh look at that. No more archer production. So indeed Viper will switch away from archers. Yeah, adding a stable. Does have a lot of food. Might make sense to make some knights here. And Tato needs to defend from this. Tato doesn't have the biggest feudal age army, but it could potentially pay off here that stable foundations are going down pretty quick 27 hp wow i mean if tato can kill this right before viper upgrades them this will be really valuable for him does have fletching does have armor we see what? supplies what? 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 for supplies viper. oh misclick no. <laughs> he's just doing that for the infantry fans <laughs> uh, uh, maybe to, to play with the casters there <laughs> okay uh, he's is not getting crossbowmen right now which is interesting. Yeah. I think uh, he just determines that it's not worth it for him because it is 175 food and 125 gold. And Tato is going to kill a couple of these archers anyways. Tato feels like he's forced to build a defensive tower at his gold though. So that means no extra town center if he wasn't on stone, which he already is though. So yep. a reasonable investment. Yeah, and the skirms have done a really nice job for Tato. He's going to kill all the archers, which will have him feeling pretty good against that. And Tato looking around on the berries to see if Viper's there with the scouts. Viper is not. Viper TC number two in the north. And then TC number three will actually go on the berries just after Tato passed that. So th quick three TC eco for the Viper. Tato going to do the same. TC in the right corner. And then uh, venturing outside of his walls, a little risky, to TC the uh, south of his base. Yeah, he felt like, okay, I just cleared up the army there. I still see some archers. A bit of a surprise that Tato built the town center in the back will make it tricky for him to expand in the long run, but yeah. obviously not the safe choice for now. And so we've arrived to the type of game that Viper thrives in, right? It's all tiny little moments, expanding over time, building up towards it. Where's your best castle position? What's your best late game unit comp? And it was really interesting to see how Viper opened here. Also really surprised. He's actually putting quite a few villagers on stone at the moment. Look at that mining camp near his starting TC. So that is a lot more than you would normally expect in a normal transition game towards Eco. That tells us Viper wants a castle in Castle Age. And not even like late Castle Age before him. Like building a mining camp there. Yeah, it's cheaper for Japanese, but it's like 
you only get 700 stone out of that area anyways, yeah. and you're saving like one tile of walking distance. Yeah, that's true. Knights, is what Japanese want to go, or uh, uh, Franks want to go for, but the Japanese cab archers are here, and if you're wondering, bonuses Viper's using here, it's just access to full upgrades. That's it. There's, It's not cheaper for the Japanese to make cab archers, but cab archer is just a really good unit. And Tato, taking the score lead here, I think he's done a great job with his scouting. He's got lots of vision there, which has contributed to that. But Viper with the economic lead, he's with the army lead as well. And Tato might need to mix in something other than just knights. Mm -hmm. Certainly needs the second armor upgrade if he wants to do anything against those CA. Uh, and yeah, he's building the Siege Workshop at the front. Typical answer right now is to go for some Scorpions. If you have like three, four Scorpions, those CA can't really engage. Yeah, we saw Yo do that against Barls in the quarterfinal. And it was after Barls had done so well with Magyar Cav Archers. Okay, so Viper, at, until now, thought that Tata would not expand it to have any of this extra gold. He sees the TC now. That could be the target as Viper quick walls after getting a conversion. Uh, that could be the target for Viper to drop that castle soon. Yeah, he, he could, just very defensively there. Could also think about going directly into the center. You can build a castle there. But typical Viper approach would be on a hill. Yeah, on a hill. It, it, there's no natural spot to really place a castle near that TC, so we'll see. And Cav Archer Mass normally takes some time to build up. Viper has had quite a bit of time here. 75 villagers for him. 28 seconds of TC idle time for Viper. Just super smooth here, but Tato hanging in here with his vil count and his army count being competitive. Ah, uh, yeah, 62 villages only here. We'll stay at 3 to see against the 4. We'll fall a bit behind Viper now with the university. Really rushes it with 4 villages. Desperately wants to get ballistics, apparently. Yeah, maybe. Feels like that would help him. Viper with a monk there. Uh, going to lose it on the water. Tato even hopped out with the demo. So both players losing a monk next to a relic. Viper's going to grab relic number two in the north. As well as he's, oh. e he's even checking relic number three, maybe. CA running straight line into scorpions. Ooh, takes two shots and gets away. I actually think this is a spot where instead of ballistics, a siege workshop and a Meganel would help so much more. Against the Frank monks. Push, yeah. And yeah, then yeah, yeah. against the scorpions. Because Franks cannot get redemption. Viper's probably thinking, why not both, though? Because we do see the Siege Workshop. Mm -hmm. His economy is good enough, right? Yep. He's popped now. That's the only reason why his idle CC is going up. He actually has villagers in queue. Yep. And so maybe the pressure getting to Viper a little bit. Did get into the back with two Cav Archers. He must have run right past Tato's walls there. So that'll be awkward for Tato. Tato's army is like... If he gets conversions and his Scorpions hit the shots, could be an epic fight for him, but... Every time I move forward with an army like this against Viper's army, I lose everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's so easy to screw up here if you're a Tato. Like, your army is basically only threatening right now, but you should never take a good fight, right? Because you don't have anything that kills something right now, yeah. and the opponent can decide when they want to take the fight. 100%, and Tato is trying to find a good target. Kind of tough for him to find it. Viper can see him the whole way through. Some nice walling from Viper. And Viper has pulled the Cav Archers to the south of this wood line. Tato will have a hill there. And Tato also getting a TC up on berries here. Tato's done a great job to stay in this game and, and get key areas locked down. Really impressive. I thought he'd be without gold and, and food and all types of things here. Expanding nicely for sure. It's now above 80 villages as well, but still only one armor upgrade on his knights. That won't be enough. Yep. And Viper has, still has to be careful with the scorpions and the monks. Viper opting for the defensive castle towards the middle. He did eventually shift off of stone after we brought it up, so he took his time. And Tato really moving forward. I mean, it's impressive that Tato has been able to lock on the targets every single time with these monks. And it's just given him time elsewhere to expand. He's getting plus two armor on the knights, which will give him a better shot at taking good engagements. And, and he's adding stables. Yeah. So wants to fully commit there. And I think this army is just like, try to trade off as good as you can. CA really clumped up. Oh, geez, not the fight. I guess Viper's going for the monks right now, but he runs into all these scorpions. There's still two of them firing. Plus two armor comes in from Tato at the perfect time. But I guess at the end is still the scorpions are going to be pushed back. The monks will go down. 
and Viper will be somewhat okay with how this will transpire. And Tato, absolutely as well. He was, he felt like he was in a bad spot. Yeah. And he now got the night transition prepared and got Viper and it, completely out of position, forced yeah. the Siege Workshop, forced the Mangonel, and traded off against some CA. That's true. Yeah, I mean, I think Viper would have wanted to deal with that a bit earlier. And now you can start to see Tato, and he's, he's not going to roll over. Like most players, people consider him top five. He was in the semis last time. He's in going deep into every event, especially mixed map tournaments where there's lots of prep. And again, it's just like such a tricky spot to be up against Cav Archers with the Franks. Tato making some stuff happen here. I'm impressed. Viper tried to Tato Tato, which was that the, uh, didn't work too well. Did the demo yeah, kill the knight? I didn't even think Viper would use it. It, it, it was like a single-digit HP knight. Okay. <laughs> 26 okay, Cav Archers. More rates. Yeah, 26 CA. That's not the number that Viper's going to be too excited about. He actually has limited gold income right now. Really needs to find more golds. Well, the center will be open to him. He does not see the gold at the bottom. South of his stone. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a gold that's always going to be there, though. He might think of that. Viper like, really wants this relic. Man, these guys are going for so many relics. <laughs> and Tato finding some kills with villagers in the north. Viper going to see this, though. Viper on the way to Imp, and he does have some army on the way with a monk there who uh, is going to get the conversion. Viper killed 10 villagers. Tato's killed 5. Tato is spending all of his food and all of his gold on night production. So Tato needs to find value from that if Viper is on the way to the Imperial Age right now. And right now, the Knights are... Yeah, they are present, but they're not finding the massive kills that they want to. And that should be good for the Viper. This demo from Tato doesn't hit the Castle Foundation, right? In my dream world? No. Okay, because I was going to say, that would be amazing. Like, if he could somehow <laughs> demo the Foundation... Well, Tato's killed more Vils in the north. He's also kept Viper off of a lot of gold there. Also, I think Capture Age did an update where it loops in multiple cells in the in like the notification bar because it says sold 200 food and sold 200 stone, which I've never seen oh. before. Yeah, might have been. Like, I got a message. Uh, there's an update. Go update. And yeah. I don't have it. So it's the update from today. Okay, yep, yep. That's that's what it is. It's actually very nice. <laughs> and that was just Viper not having gold. And, and honestly, like, Tato's still in Castle Age. Obviously, you think with Viper on the way to Imp, it's going to be very good for Viper. And I'm sure it will be. But Tato's pop is good. Pretty healthy. And Viper not being able to lock down the gold too easily right now could be a problem. He really needs to know and scout that gold in the south for him. Or like the left side, I guess. No. He also is at the bottom gold, and he still can go towards the center, right? Yeah, it's yeah, not true. too tricky for him to switch into Harbadiers, and then it will be tough for Tato to get a really good army. Yeah, Tato's him. still not imping either. Tato really hoping these Scorpions, Scorpions. are going to find some shots. Ah! Oof, big hits. Not as big as maybe Tato needed, though, because Viper can upgrade his units. He's got Pikeman switch coming in. Japanese pikemen, so good. They attack so quickly. And being even on economy and having the better army is amazing for the Viper right now. Okay, Bracer. That alone is such a good upgrade against Castle Age army. Look at and... Viper. Look at how many woodline villagers Viper has in the same spot here. Tato's finding it with the light calf. It's like <laughs> the, the most beautiful little line of lumberjacks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there will be some dead ones, and Tedo is upping to Imperial Age now as well. Yeah. Can't be too unhappy with, with what he's finding here. Also could deny the chemistry upgrade if he keeps attacking the university. I mean, he is really making Viper work right now. And if those that watch Tato ACCM remember, Tato had a similar position that Viper has in their game and then lost it because he was getting raided by Lycav. Now, the civs were different. You know, there's no Malian upgrades for Tato coming soon, but... But still, I mean, Tato really using the mobility here. Viper's has struggled a little bit to get all the, the mass that he wants. Tato with the pop lead. Really nice, or at least even population now. Still can expand. And as I said, it's easier to play the Frank role than to play the Japanese role here. Yep. 
And I think there is an issue, though. Like, you can raid and you can raid and you can kill the 44 villagers like you have if you're Tato. But there is a point where the death ball gets so big that if you haven't taken good trades against the army, you cannot stop it. But now is not Just the time to fight against the army. We will see heavy scorpions in this game. You think so? I think so. He's making more siege workshops. You're right. Heavy scorpions is he actually mass really good against Halb and Cav Archer, really. Yeah, yeah. Just need to connect, right? That's the big if. Like, you need to have the opponent basically step into your territory. Yeah. This would be a Tato Masterclass. If he can win with Heavy Scorpion, no one goes Heavy Scorpion. No yeah, one. Uh, and it's they cheaper got it now. Slightly, yeah, they got slightly cheaper, yep. the, the Heavy Upgrade. Yeah. Viper has had five on gold for a very long time. Now, he does have three relics, but Tato is going to TC the gold in the north, deny that TC from Viper. I don't know if Tato will actually TC yet. First upgrade click from Tato might be Heavy Scorpion. It's always awkward for me to afford it, though, because it's so still so costly on wood. If he cancels those two stables, he can actually afford it. Oh, he's losing so many scorpions before that upgrade could come in. But, you know, he's, he has to prioritize more stable units, more armor. He's doing that now. Tato's population, 180. He is losing control, though. Viper with guard tower has taken out the castle that Tato had. And that's the only castle, ta castle Tato has to protect himself right now. Can soon afford another one, though. Is heavily on stone. And now has the resources for Heavy Scorpion. Oh boy, what an upgrade. And it's coming in. Yeah. No, we, we don't have uh, Heavy Cav Archer yet for the Viper. We don't have Halb yet for the Viper. I mean, he has just been having to deal with so many raids. I like the towers, sure. But I feel like the towers are an afterthought compared to some of the other things we've mentioned. And Tato is not going to give Viper the time to think about it. The Cav Archer mass is super low. If it is straight infantry from Viper... Tattoo can hold for a while with heavy scorpions patrolling around. They're down to 11 CA, and they can't take any engagements. Look at that. Heavy scorpions, 16 damage output. Yeah, and much harder to kill as well. They get an HP increase, as far as I'm aware. Tato able to castle in the north, take some stone, take some gold. I think he is going to make Viper work even harder for this. I think Viper... I mean, he's going for keep. It's actually so cool. I hope we see Yasama, too. I want to see some mm. of these techs. But Viper's struggling against the raids. There's so many different areas he will have to defend here. And Tato is in the center again. The same wood line where he already killed 10 villagers earlier. But this time, the CA are waiting for the light cap and Tato thinks better of it. It's so funny how you see a casual Viper uh, monk bringing in a relic as 60 villagers have died. <laughs> He's just like, it's okay. I could get my relics, still play late game. Keep is going to be really tough for Tato to push. I wonder if we'll even see Onager from Viper this game, because that, I think, is the best tool the Japanese might have available to deal with the Heavy Scorpion. Mm, what would be an interesting tech? It's also a mobility oh problem, right? Viper's going to add a Cannon Galleon from the water. Oh, wow. That is so sick. That is so Trying smart. To the castle there. He could That's actually sick, do yeah. it from both sides if he wants to dock the other side. That is... <laughs> Dang, man. That is so smart. From both of them. I mean, they're both so brilliant. Is that why Hera played Spanish on the map? <laughs> That's what he should have done. <laughs> That's the one thing Hera was missing. Oh, uh, There's Heavy Cav Archer for Viper. The Scorpions are so slow. Tata's got a ball of them, but he needs to get to the Trebuchets and the Cannon Galleon from Viper. Uh, I don't think he's going to have the time to get over there. Seems like the castle will be gone. Siege Engineers came in, so more range and another damage for those heavy scorpions. And Viper tries to expand some more at the top. It feels like Viper has more map control of all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the four relics. Uh, and heavy scorpions can't win the game. They can hold, but unless you have like four trebs, four cannons with them, and are just going for a big snowball push through the middle, I think you're really going to struggle to finish off the game with Heavy Scorpion. Look at the quick wall from Viper in the north. And now all the villagers for Tato exposed. They don't have anything defending them. Yeah, he has to run there. Tato now preparing three bombard cannons. I think he realizes, damn, I need to make a push through the center. Happen. Yeah. Unfortunately for him, it's just going to take so much time. And it gives Viper more control. Vision over that other relic as well. Viper's going to send that monk forward for it, I'm sure. 
And I, honestly, it, it feels like a lack of response from Tata for some people, I'm sure, because he just let all this die. But if he reacts, he just dies through the middle anyways. So he's just giving that up. And he wants the craziest death ball that we've seen from Franks. This, uh, it's hard to say because, like, we've seen Paladins a million times, so it doesn't feel as crazy. <laughs> we saw, like, some games with crazy Paladins, but I was not expecting this from the Franks when we loaded into this. What in the world? What a sick play. Yeah, but it's obviously, like, we didn't expect Japanese against Franks either, right? Yeah, so we can yeah. then. Now you see the power of the Scorpions. Yeah, Halbs might attack faster, but not if they're dead. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Tato's still trying to raid in some areas as well, which is very hard to find right now. Viper does have Onager completed. He would need a Halbs to protect his Onagers, though. Oh, traps exposed. Could be two kills. Yeah, that's a fair point. Viper CA coming over. Tato, if he needs gold, can just if he could push the middle, he has the gold. Oh, and Onager's just spawning. Tato now sees the switch. Yeah, so you would just need more light cap to snipe the onager, I guess, just like he sniped the traps. Can you scorpions to kill that onager because it's weak? Yeah, or bomber cannons, yep. Yeah. Hmm. I think it'd be worth it to add a dock in the center gold area too, if you're Viper. Just for like random demos or cannon galleons. Okay. Heavy scorpions, good unit. Yeah, Tato knows, like, I'm going to get raided, but I kind of have to let that happen. I have to push middle. Viper will try and distract him. If Viper can get raids in and obviously hold here, he will win this game. Feels like the Onager choice was perfect from Viper, though. It was so well-timed, and it's making it awkward for Tato to use these Scorpions. Uh, I think he needs spread formation. He needs to go a bit further back. Bombard cannons, the real crucial unit. But you see, oh. I mean, CA, they can't engage against the Scorpions at all. Yeah, I think Viper could consider with that food count, maybe some of his own like have. But then again, are you being pop efficient when Japanese like have lacked the final armor? Probably are not, which is why Viper's not doing it. 4k food for him. And he's making demos on the right docks there, Nilly. So if Tato gets too close... Uh -oh. oh, God. Uh -oh. oh, God. The Onagers! I feel like the Onagers should have done more damage there. But they're finally connecting. And Viper is going to engage. And all the Scorpions are disappearing before us. What a fight. Absolutely crazy. That spread with the Onagers. Absolute perfection in the engagement. He had, like, he had one from the north, one from the middle, one from the south. And then he had the Cav Archers and the Halbs. Moving all around there. A fun game to start off the semifinal. Both players played fantastic. But really, from the jump, it was Viper with control, right? And he never really lost it. Like, Tato did a great job to try and come back in this game. And Heavy Scorpion on paper might have been good. But I think, competitively, on an open map where you need mobility, if your fallback is Heavy Scorpion, something went wrong for you. <laughs> Oi, 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 oi. What a good game. This is really, really entertaining. And yeah, Viper somehow made it work, right? This is so weird because you get raided at so many different angles. But just this massive fight in Feudal Age, it felt like from there on, Viper was just in full control. Yeah, seriously was. And he also had a really nice Civ. I don't know if he expected Tato to go for the Franks. But we've usually seen civilizations that are going to be going Knights and Camels. And boom. Um, the, the only exception to that has been Cav Archer Civ. So, Viper opting for Japanese. I think Jordan played Japanese in the group stage, but we, really, I wouldn't say Japanese was what I would have guessed if you would have asked me for this map. So, it worked out very well for the Viper. Good start for him. Occasionally with Viper, even through his like own words, there can be this first game of the day, need to warm up type of situation for him. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, he was well warmed up here. He, he did not need warmed <laughs> up at all. Yeah, yeah. It's also like he is a bit more shaky the moment he faces the pressure, right? Th that's a bit different compared yep. to he opens men at arms and he's in full control. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and he, you know, he forced reactions from Tato and that is kind of how the whole game went. Viper ended that game with five relics. We have hopefully six more games to go. And knowing Tato and how he's played in the playoffs, he's going to respond in the next game. And I hope he does. I want, I want seven games here today. Well, you know, I was wondering what Viper would choose for Hideout. Because we knew 
that Cumans was going to be banned. Cumans was always going to be freaking banned because of the existence of Tato and how good he is with the Cumans. So Viper banned the Cumans. His first pick was Malay, but there are also maps that I felt the Malay could have been played on. El Dorado being one of them, potentially Socotra. Both those maps we had seen Malay picked by other players. Uh, Viper opts for the Malay here. And this was his very first pick. So his first pick for one of Tato's home maps. And then Tato's first pick as well, Nili, uh, is the Bengalis. So this is like two civilizations that can't make knights. Well, actually, no, that's not true. Malay can, but mm -hmm. you really shouldn't. And two civilizations that have some crazy eco bonuses for a closed map. Uh, yeah, the eco is just insane, right? And the timings with Malay reaching the next age just gives you the crazy advantage. And I think Bengalis actually wants to have a longer distance between the two of them. Mm -hmm. And this super short distance, I think, will be way better for Malay. Yeah, potentially, right? We, we could talk through how that could play out. Also, should should mention, that's kind of the flip of the coin sometimes, right? Like, uh, Tato had very long distances when he was Cumans in... It wasn't that long against out, but it was a little bit longer than this, I think. But then I remember in the group stage against, um, against Leary... He had the really long distances as well. I Here's a question. Tato had that crazy game five against Doubt, where Doubt went Bengalis against his humans. And I think if you would have asked Tato before that, Tato would have been like, humans all the way, right? Tato uh, no. surely watched that game. Do you think Tato went Bengalis first pick because he realized how strong it was in that game? Or do you think he would have rated it to be strong even before that game against Doubt? Um, Tato actually thought um, Bengalis should beat Cumans once we get to Elephant Archers. Okay. Right? Yep. Um, but I, I'm a bit surprised how Tato instantly jumped on Bengalis here. Maybe he felt he didn't want to face Bengalis and Malay yeah. because Malay are so versatile. And he felt, okay, if I don't want like a guaranteed loss, uh, there aren't a lot of Sifs that still can compete with Malay economy. Okay, well, follow up question. Tato expressed that, right? That he thinks Bengali should win. He said that in the GL Discord, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Vipers in the GL right. Discord, right? Yeah, but Bengali's against Cumans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I wonder... I mean, listen, I think both Bengali's and Malay are really good, but I'm just I'm kind of curious to the backstory of it, you know, because we have literally... Well, no, we do have lots to talk about, but it was just something that, that came to my mind here. So, yeah, I mean, the Malay advanced faster to the next stage. And like you said, being a bit closer could help with the um, with the rush timings, whether that be Castle Age, which is a bit unlikely, or the Imperial Age. So is there something that Tato could potentially do to affect Viper's timings here? Uh, well, we could him just play uh, Mangonal Aggression, some Mongs, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, Mongs of Bengalis are pretty crazy. The thing is, like Viper, he can just easily defend this, right? It feels like a really tight area, not a lot of like moving around possibilities. You can easily go for your own monks, go for some mangonels. So I feel like aggression would not work well with this map design. Okay. You know what I think would be a very Tato-esque thing to do? I think Tato will open stable, and I believe that Tato will, like... You know, it'll get to a point where they both have pretty good economies. And then Tato goes, I'm going to go for a third and a fourth stable right now. Or a second and a third stable. And just spam even more light cap. I think it's super risky against the Malay because the Malay could didn't switch into pikes. But, like, at some point, there's going to be additional investment from both of them in the, uh, you know, the, the outer areas of the map that's not walled. And I think light cap would make sense if there, you think there's going to be monks out there. Uh, yeah, yeah, makes a lot of sense. And you get the map control. Obviously, Malay, not really the typical civilization that would take into pikes uh, being in Castle Age. So, yeah, lots of options there. And Viper gets up to Feudal Age quite nice and early. Don't get too excited. You won't go for anything. This is just the Feudal Age. Malay, boom, you get your eco upgrades. The advantage is simply that you're way safer against Fuel Age aggression, yep. and your boom is roughly the same. Yeah, so looking at resources collected will be kind of fun, because the Megalis get two villagers from advancing to the next stage. 
and that applies as well when they reach the castle. So in many ways, it's plus four vills for Tato. That said, Viper Civ then spends less time researching the next stage and researching going up to the next stage. Um, but I actually don't know how much time it typically takes. What would that be? Like five bills normally? Uh, I mean, they should be five bills ahead reaching Castle Edge, yeah. Yeah, so it's like two. It's yeah, so anyways. Um, like one ahead against Bengalis, yeah. With the eco upgrades being in, which is really nice. But like mm -hmm. late yeah. game, if we're comparing late game comps, I still think players are sleeping on full elite battle elephant with a melee. But um, elephant archers with the Bengalis, combined with their crazy monks, combined with halves and skirms, like it's just so much better than what the melee offer, I think. Well, uh, melee obviously can go for elite skirmishes, right? The big difference to humans that didn't have Bracer. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, elephant arch is probably less of an option here. I think it will mainly be like monks and then skirmishes, and then we will try to see what we transition into depending on what Viper wants to go for. I doubt that Tatsu did this for mind game purposes, but sometimes on closed maps, players do. And I like how Tato made the blacksmith somewhere where Viper could scout it, but he didn't show him the market. I think Viper should assume based on the uptime, and these guys know the build so well, that Tato's just going for a boom. But uh, even still, like, if you show the blacksmith and then Viper can't see the second building, Viper might think that you're going to have a stable in there hidden away to make some army, and that might, you know, affect Viper's decision-making. Mm -hmm. But... Let me think about it. If you build... I think it's pretty random what Tato goes for, right? You don't really have an idea if it's stable or market here. Yeah. And I don't think Viper's decision to go for stable now is necessarily influenced by what he just saw. I think this is just <laughs> Viper thinking that it's just a safe play to have scouts, but... Um... Maybe see the market getting into the edge there. Oh, Viper! I think close. if he tries to get really close to the edge there... There is a chance. Yeah, true. I just, I always wonder, like, I think Tata mm. would think about it. I think there's some other players that just wouldn't think about the mind game aspect. But if you were to ask a player like John Slow, for example, who obviously isn't in TTL Platinum, but a player who's really experienced <laughs> on Arena, like, he would stress to you that the building location is really important. And, you know, information is kind of the number one thing a closed map player could have, so... Wow, this uptime, though, from Viper. So he has full farms with eco upgrades, and he's had the wood upgrade for a very long time. Tato just researched it, and he's going to be in Castle Age about 40 seconds after Tato. That is the power of Malay. Yeah, pretty crazy for sure, and that's not the end of it, right? They also will be up to Imperial Age so much faster. Very reasonable tech tree, incredibly good if gold runs out. And that's, yeah, those are the many reasons why Malay are considered to be so strong here. Yeah. No loom for Vipers. He just wanders forward, just sees Tato's scout. Tato could have more scouts, but doesn't have more scouts. Hits the Castle Age faster. Would drop TC number two. By the way, that is extremely close to Viper's eco. Like, that chop through is going to happen sooner than we think. And Viper... Viper, actually, with the sneaky villager, that will... Act the typically, you think, okay, it just goes for Mangonel. Oh. But the Mangonel will actually easily push towards the gold. He sees the gold from Tato, yeah. He can see the gold. Now, Viper's gold is a bit more protected, but Viper's always going to have map control anyways. Like, I also... I don't know if Viper thought about this, but he has his additional scouts in a position where Tato won't want to run towards his base. Yeah, Viper so like, wants to body block so that Tato changes yeah, the direction. So Tato goes somewhere else. Is Tato obviously having the stone and gold more forward on the hideout? Can happen, and it's unfortunate in this case, and Viper's going to abuse it. Should Tato have done something more to protect it if his gold's like that? It's hard to say. Conversion would be lovely for conversion. Tato. He doesn't get it, so now he has no vision, and Viper has the map control. <laughs> Wait, Vanilli, look at Viper's TC. They're going to chop to each other so quickly here. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's really funny. And Viper, my, uh, Tato might have... No, Viper might have seen the farm there. I wasn't 100% sure, so he might yeah. know that that's actually the TC. Yeah. Viper is saving this. He knows Tato's in the dark. 
if your opponent knows normally you're going to apply pressure but the faster that you move out here the sooner tato knows and i think like i i feel bad for tato at the moment because he's completely in the dark and if he knew about it he could at least go for redemption maybe and to convert the siege but he just has no clue this is about to hit him and if the gold is gone, then he needs to put everything onto stone, which will be tricky as well. Drops off the gold and now has to run. Sells all his wood and food, tries to get redemption in somehow. Yeah, and he just didn't have a lot of gold, Nilly. He did not have a lot of gold. And maybe he wasn't expecting Viper to go for the light cap because he's only open monks here. A dream start here for Viper. Obviously played so well in the first game. But this is Tato's home map, and it really feels like these are the types of maps Tato's going to have to get wins on to beat Viper if he's in tip-top shape. And it looks like he is. Okay, and our villagers in danger here as well. Worker efficiency will go down quite a bit. Nightcap even jumping. Does he really want to commit against the two monks? He does. He's going to get one of them. And he also is dove with his Manganel here. And Manganel going to go down to the TC. So not the best thing for Viper there. Tato still could stabilize if he converts that Manganel. Redemption is in. Can load up against the light cap, then switch to the manganel. Should be a quick conversion. Yeah, I think Viper may decide to back away now. And Tato knows it, but the idle TC time's gone up. Tato's had the villager lead. Viper just now adding the third TC. Viper knows about that TC there on the wood line now, though. So they're both going to find out in a second, but Viper actually scouted that with his light cap. Tato doesn't know it yet. Yeah, he'll he'll probably see a Viper Villager here soon. I mean, at the end of the day, I think you just place a new Lumber Camp. But that could lead to a Siege Push over the trees. Just trap, nice and early. But yeah, you, you just need to micro bit and you will be fine with your Villagers still chopping yeah. for quite some time. I think Tato, once he gets to a couple Spearmen with his Monks, he's actually going to end up being okay. He does have to be careful here because he doesn't have Sanctity completed yet. But being Bengalis with the Monk armor combined with the Sanctity HP and some Spearmen, he should be able to get back to his gold. And honestly, Tata didn't lose any villagers. He killed the Manganel. He lo lost a Monk. Like, this is actually a pretty reasonable situation for Tato to stabilize from. It's just, again, Viper has the control and Viper has the initiative. And it's going to be really tough to get the control back from Viper. But now he invested more than a thousand gold into, into monks and upgrades. Yep. That's something we can't understate. And yep. obviously he wants to invest into it anyway, so it's not the biggest loss. And also behind it, it's not unlikely that Viper will get a massive Reddick lead. Yep. Like three Very are fair. guaranteed. He's dreaming of five. Yeah, I, you know, it's it's so tricky, man. But like Viper's like have the vision he has is affected the game so much. Here he goes. Now, the Siege Push can be something Viper gives up on in a second. Tato protects his monks very nicely. Viper might end up having to delete not just the Siege Workshop, but also the houses here, because Tato's starting to convert them now. Yeah, actually not a great positioning for the houses, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, that he's going to get pop-capped if he... Well, it'll be close. But you I should not give your opponent houses. I think you have to. And then prepare some at home. Right? Give him the first two. And then because attack. you need to prepare the houses. Yeah. Also, Viper added a tower on the TC woodline situation. The monks can't convert anymore because they stole the houses. Viper goes in with the light cav. He gets both monks. So he trades two houses for two monks. That's a pretty good trade. Yeah. And two light cav, obviously. But the question is how much they would do anyways. Tattle floating quite some wood here. Didn't have enough space to, for proper farming. Yeah. It's a fair point. Viper rolling to the left with his Manganel right now, which is kind of funny. Just a Manganel out in no man's land was not what I was expecting. <laughs> Both players floating wood, to be fair, right? Because they, they don't really want to leave their base with their farming eco at this stage of the game. I actually noticed for a lot of players who play hideout, like let's say the Drakens of the community, at this stage, they don't actually expand their farms. They sell their thousand wood and just buy the food to go in. <laughs> really common. Just more protected, right? And then you get some map control and then you can expand. Yep. And it's just the easier way, right? With that you see now from Tato, I wouldn't be surprised if we see 12 farms around it. Mm, yeah, on the outside, that would make sense. Does have his stone, does have his gold, does have his vill lead with the Bengalis. We'll get two villagers from each TC 
when he makes it to the next stage as well. So Tata will definitely have the villager lead. But Tata needs map control. And he needs army to compete for map control. And he's gone for the Ratha. Now this unit can be switched to melee mode. So it's kind of similar to a knight in melee mode. So it would beat a light cav. But it could be countered by skirms pretty well. Which we learned in the Tato Doubt series. Oof, gate. I missed the gate. Yeah. Where was the gate? Sorry, was it Viper making the Against gate? Against the Rath at the front. Yeah, got zero, it. zero distant, uh, difference. Got it. Yeah, I was watching the five spearmen kill the monk on the left side. So Viper might not be able to get the relic that he so badly wants. But he does have two right now. There's also one in the very north that I'm not sure he scouted. Yeah, he didn't actually scout that. But the odds are he's probably going to find it. Viper's going to be imp in 50 seconds. This is the moment. Tato just needs to stop Viper from advancing forward with that castle, which is what Viper wants to do. Viper's saving that stone for a reason. Not unlikely that we will soon see a mass delete of those palisade walls. And yeah, the castle way more in the back than I, he ideally wanted to. Yeah. Tato has to be happy with this. Yeah, can't, can he not go in there? I think there's a hole there that Viper had opened. I can't really tell. Yeah. Viper gets a really fast conversion there. But Tato just converts it back. Um, yeah, that is, this is the ideal situation for Tato to at least keep Viper from using his imp advantage. I don't think Viper was expecting there to be Ratha here, nearly. I think he was expecting there to be, um, I don't know, something else. Good map control for Tato. Yeah, but it's still, like, Tato deep in Castle Age, 500 foot, 300 gold, Viper, he's taking to everything now. And once we get Bracer, Castle Age army won't be that good yeah. anymore. I... I'd like to see Tato try and use his army to hold this position. Maybe it's too late, but I was thinking maybe a cheeky little stone wall just to delay Viper as much as possible. It's probably too late. If he can just put one trap, right? Viper yeah. doesn't need to move out. He needs to get upgrades. Yep. I think it, it would have been a nice cheeky one, but the area is simply too big. Yeah, that's true. Uh, like have v Spearman v Manganel on the other side. Viper pulling the Spearman away, though. Might be able to snag that relic. <laughs> but Tato sees it. Oh, I think... No, he doesn't. Yeah, I think he's really distracted because there's an imp army from Viper coming out across. Like we established before, Skirmisher's pretty good with that bonus damage against the Ratha. And Viper's going to have upgrades flying in. He doesn't have a trebuchet on the way yet, but it feels like with two cast with a castle already, sorry, and uh, Viper's stone count, he might want to advance forward to drop a forward castle here. Yeah. And not the craziest one. Obviously, doesn't want to build it directly next to the siege workshop. Otherwise, an elephant could easily kill it. And yeah, trap now being added. I think next step is to think about bombard cannons. Although the big question mark, you know that your opponent already has redemption on their monks. Do you even want to add any bombard cannons? Yeah, that's really tricky. I think for Viper, at least Trebs, right? Trebs an army. He knows his opponent will have the eco lead. I like the fact that Tato is stopping Wrath of Production now. We already established in his series against Doubt when there's skirms on the field, it might not be worth the cost. Big shot. Viper micros beautifully. If he was looking anywhere else, he could have lost half his army there. Okay, nice save. And Tato, yeah, he just moved away in the center. We'll have another wood line. So the Tower of the Viper is quite a nice gimmick, but won't do too, too much. Ooh, Tato counterattack with... Quite a few Ratha there. So he's going to find some exposed areas of eco for Viper. Viper wants to push. So this could affect Viper's focus on the front. And it could help with Tato's uh, important holds here. I feel like if Tato loses this castle on the right side, he probably is going to lose this game. Ah, but how can he hold that one? He can has only traps as an option. Like... That he will have to build them ASAP, and yeah. even then it will get tricky. No a lot HP of P upgrades on the castle. A lot of players who are going to push on the the closest side, they stonewall the other side. Viper has not done that here. Tata with a forty villager lead. Yes, he'll take a loss or two, but Viper's army isn't in position to protect his traps. Viper reacted there, lost a bunch of skirms to the Manganel underneath the castle next to the workshop. But the raids from Tato is he actually gets into Viper's eco. He followed him in here. This could really pay off for Tato. Oh, yeah. We'll get some for sure. Some idle CC forced. But the big question mark is still, like, it feels like the most crucial thing is the, uh, the castle at the right-hand side. Yep. 
And it's so important that Viper continues to focus on that then. You can see maybe Tato using these two mangonels to get some shots on the traps while Viper's distracted. Viper's garrison has killed the Ratha. So the Ratha raid's been killed. Viper still has that army that looped all the way in the back of Tato's eco. And Tato doesn't have an answer to that. Viper did take out Tato's castle. Tato has zero villagers on stone right now. That is such a big castle for Viper to take down. It's important to, for Tato to continue producing skirmishes on that hill. And yeah, you said it. Zero on stone. He will have to put villagers on stone to get some more control of that area again. Yep. I love the castle from Viper near the stone in the north there. Because that's the area he just got raided. And Viper with his four trebs. Love the patience with that, Nilly. Cannot move forward right away. Just wait until he's got his army. Oh, man. If Tato had almost... If, if only Tato had placed his castles... Well, no, the castle's actually perfect. Viper can advance that direction. And Viper now has to dive against the lead skirm. So, reasonable fight for Tato to take there. Still no chemistry for Viper. Ooh. I mean, was really at the limit with resources when he made it to the Imperial Age, as you so often are with the Malay. Yeah. No. But I feel like that's something that he could have justified now, and if, if Tato holds to the hill with his own skirms, and then some elephant archers to tank, not seeing a lot more than range units for Viper, and I could see Tato with the Vili getting to a pretty good army comp here. Tato's still missing the last armor for his skirms. It's actually a pretty big thing. Yeah. Especially, like... The more units you build, the more important the upgrades become. And, well, we, we already see 30 scums in the field. He just traded off, like, 20. Yeah, so tough when you're making Elephant Archers to get full upgrades. Like, yes, the unique tech. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. the full Blacksmith upgrades, Elite, all this stuff. It's insane when you get to it, but it's not cheap. Parthian's not cheap either. Like, he's still, what, like, three upgrades? Like, maybe 2,000 food, 1,500 gold away from getting fully upgraded elephant archers and then the skirmishers do bonus damage anyway still mm -hmm. so it's it's not an easy situation to be in if you're tato but the guy is hold, held here and viper's not exactly pushing him right now and viper is using some trebs in the middle i wonder if viper is going to chop through the middle it seems like he would have moved his villagers elsewhere if he didn't want to chop through uh, yeah yeah it Looks like it. He just replaced the lumber camp as well. And I think the elephant archers there aren't really to take a fight. I think they're more of like, okay, I also have a unit in case like 10 karambits are suddenly showing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man. Not not the skirmisher number Tata would want. If he had a few more skirmishers, this could be better. But the treb number is pretty fantastic. Viper has actually been able to take out one of Tato's trebs. But Viper pulled his trebs to the middle, so he doesn't have as much to push here. And I felt like it should have been low priority for Viper to treb down a TC that Tato wasn't really producing out of anyways. If Viper loses this castle, and we think maybe Tato's army comp is better, this could be this could be huge. Both players' production buildings are going to be really exposed now. If it's like the last armor there for Tato, it's something you have to click through. Also, both players still without hand card here. Trap's now helping out in the skirmisher war. Yep. Maybe Tato could think about switching into light cap. Oh god, Karambits are through. Karambits are through. Viper chopped through. He was waiting. Tato sees it. Houses. I mean, these things are pretty weak if they're not elite. But they could be really annoying. And again, it takes away from Tato's push. But Tato, I think, happy to wait anyways. And TC fire. You know, the Ratha. The Elephant Archer. All this stuff should clear up the raid. Nice reaction here. So far from Tato. Yeah, I think he didn't lose a single villager. Obviously, some idle time, but that's a reasonable amount of units there. And Viper advanced in the center, and Viper now is thinking about attacking into an assortment. Wow. Viper also really wants that relic. And you can see on the right side, Nilly, Tato's not taking the fight that he wants. He's not taking it in the way that he would normally micro it because of this raid from Viper. And Viper really wants that fifth relic. Look at this guy. He's got the monk coming in. Now, I think he'll have to use the skirms to tank castle fire. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he's going to click the skirms in. Maybe he's already done so. Monk's going to die, though. Cheeky mm -hmm. attempt there from Viper. But oh, wow. We'll get the starting to see here, most likely. Yeah, indeed. And might just move back. And this is tricky for Tato. Now, where do you push? How do you try to approach this? Yeah, like, what do you make? Viper's just going full skirm. You'd have to go calf here. You would need stables. 
and you would need to be teching into like have upgrades but that is so tough to do when your main eco has been raided and you've lost your tcs like that is a lot of farming eco from tato exposed and viper using this time to go for supplies and long swordsman all the way to two-handed swordsman did he get force levy i don't think so yet okay so that would be force levy all of your uh two-handed swordsmen would then just cost food and then if you have five relics too that's gonna be so tough for tato I still think like if tato has any chance he needs to have elite elephant archer like you have to max out and you have to get uh pikes the unique tech another monk try tristan yeah. distracting with his skirms yup 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 does tato notice it Tato doesn't see it. Vipe. Oh! oh! What? <laughs> I think the castle. Whoa! That was a nice snipe from Tato. Well, I think the castle got it, yeah. Yeah, it must have been the castle because there was some crazy range there. Viper's trebuchet is going to pack up here. He doesn't have the army to protect them. Could lose them to the elfin archers. Viper already making another monk because he wants that relic. It's a little bit closer to his base. And on the right side, we still just have skirms trading. But it is Viper in full control here, and I, obviously Tato played amazing game one. He's played amazing in this game as well. But really, I feel like this has to be a W for Tato. It would be so good for him to somehow pull this out. Uh, yeah, desperately needed, it feels like, right? Going down to zero and probably one of your best maps. Like, how are you envisioning the set going for you after that? And I like that he's twitching into light calf right now. We are mainly seeing skirmishes, but soon he will get the bad news when the two assortment are arriving. Yeah, and this is the way to do it, folks. Don't like sit at 150 population and start to mix in the infantry. Wait till you're fully popped, get all your techs, and then have all your buildings ready, and then show up with it. That's the way to use the swordsman line. And yeah, you know, Viper just so good at the small moments here. And it's not a small moment. It's a massive moment because he's going to take four trebuchets on the right side from Tato. All the while queuing up the swordsman to to push the areas where Tato might have primarily skirms. Tato's economy is still in shambles. He is getting 40% of the income of the Viper right now. Yeah. It's really disappointing. Oh, yeah. no, 60%. No Mahayana tech either. Such a good late game tech with the Bengalis. Both unique techs so crucial to the Bengali success, I would say, in different ways. The Viper just repairing his trebs, saving his trebs there. And he uh, is, hasn't been able to get the relic yet. But I'm not seeing that the big ball that Tato needs to maybe push. And actually, since Tato lost his trebs, he can't push anywhere. And Viper recognizing that, he'll he'll just use the castles he has on the right side to defend and shift all of his army directly towards the middle. That's so smart. Oh, and how do you counter that? 67 military there, the four traps moving in. Tato only now hand cut. Viper still doesn't have it either though. Yeah. Fair. I think the the one thing Viper could do, like the one tiny thing he could do better is Stonewall the other side, but I guess he wants to push the other side. So maybe he mm -hmm. wants that open. But Let's open it up. Traps a bit out of position here. Have to pack again. Both players retreating with their siege. Yeah, Viper has crossbows in queue. So he wants a little bit more of a punch. I mean, fully upgraded like have can take pretty decent trades against Skirm two-handed swordsmen, but you <laughs> ideally would have like 80 farmers to fully produce them all the time. Is that 50? Tato still with a crazy army is now getting Elite Elephant Archer and Pikes. Ooh, okay. This is what we wanted to see. And final armor for the Light Cap. This is the army. The Bombard Cannon added. Tries to go for the traps in the back, maybe. Viper can easily lose this Bomber Cannon, though. Yeah, yeah. Bomber Cannon's going to be focused down by Tato here, 100%. Tato's going to get that. And the upgrades are not in yet, but still could be a decent fight. Viper does take the castle, though. At what price, I guess? At what cost? Because all of his traps are still standing here as his skirmishers retreat. Okay, now Tato has the chance to have a nice push if he keeps his two traps alive. Repairs coming in. Seems like he survives, and now he has the way better army to push through the center. Yeah, the army value says the story, right? 7,000, 7k army value. 
And now the elite elephant archers are at their peak. This is the unit that Doubt was saying to me yesterday he should have gone for in his series against Tato. And, oh, sorry, he didn't have, he didn't complete the unique tech. Uh, good from Tato to realize that, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. He's going to get that now. And Bengalis also have, don't their light calf have a bonus against Skirms? It's a team bonus now, right? Ooh. Well, maybe I'm not up to date. I think they regards. do. Um, I don't think you have to research anything. I think it's like plus five attack against Skirms for your light calf. Plus five? I, I, it's something like that. I, I, I mean, I'm crazy, but I'm pretty sure I'm correct on this one. Okay, my, my chat is saying plus two. Oh, I'll accept okay. that. But yeah, well, plus two, plus five. It's, it's all the same, right? <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> but that's nice. Like, there's a lot of cool bonuses at play here, really. And I think Viper. It's good for him. He has his four relics. It's good for him. He's gonna save gold. But he might just have a unit comp problem with the Malay. Thing is, it, it feels like you can play trash forever. Yeah. Like 200 that's true. swordmen, elite skirm. Tato kind of needs to muscle up for one massive push. Yeah. Some people are laughing at my plus five claim. Sorry. No, well, no, no wonder when I go like Kev, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Bemis get plus five. So it, it is something ah. the game, right? with their unique tech. Okay. Got against it. archers, I believe. Yeah. Mahayana now, so Tata will get more population space available. Ten... Oh god, I'm forgetting all the numbers now. Anyways, percentage of his eco does not take up... Uh, does not block pop space after this tech is completed. Look at the patient play from Viper. I wonder though, is three capped rams enough? If it's siege rams, I'm happy with it. Lay do not get siege ram. And Tato was already headed over that direction anyways with his light calf. So I think, as cheeky as it is from Viper, Tato should be able to kill that. But he's just Tato's passing. Preparing, he is preparing a crazy push through the center. In Onager, three traps, five armored elephants. Oh my goodness. No Onager upgrade yet though, Nilly. Just make an L. Okay. Light calf come back to kill the Rams. It's a nice play from Viper to try and pull Tato from this side. I love Viper's Stonewall now. You can't let Tatsu get through there. Yeah. This game's going to go Lots on for a long time. It's like, you know, crazy army that you can't afford to make a lot of against an army that you could just spam all day. And I think you have to you have to favor the army that you can spam all day. But I think Tatsu is all in. You think it's like, I think if the, it happens this, here... This game, yeah. yeah. This game will end within the next 10 minutes. Okay, you think he goes that... So do you delete vills then? Like, do you delete like 15, 20 vills to get like 100 army? Uh, Yeah, yeah. I, I think 120 army. That would be the way, like we talked about him earlier, right? Someone like Draken would play like this or yeah. Roomstock. Yeah. yeah delete just know you have to all in and then just the massive push. Wow, he's even getting he Siege build. Elephant. He's upgrading. Those things are it. really tanky. I also like that Viper's going for his own Onager. He needs something that does crazy damage output. And a couple Onagers could do that. And we haven't seen many monks from Tato in a while. Tato could convert right. the Onagers, though. Oh! Uh, perfect engagement here for Tato. Now sends this elephant in. That's actually um, come somewhat of a misplay because he could have killed all the skirmishers. Now the skirmishers will actually get some value here. But that will trigger Tato to move yeah. out, I would Thing. He's now killed, he knows, okay, I have to have the better army. He's killed two elephants in that whole thing. He lost 40 units, killed two elephants. Viper, though, and ramming the left side. Really nice pressure Tato, there. I think Tato doesn't care. Yeah, he shouldn't. Viper's also on the right. Just go middle. Just go for the kill here. Go for it, Tato. Here he comes. He doesn't really need the onager, per se, but maybe he could, you know, open this up a little bit more because it's rather choke pointy here. Asa lives and might easily get like 30 kills. Is Murder Holes in? I don't think Murder Holes is in. Tato can't garrison there. Oh man, this is crazy, Nilly. This is crazy. Army count for Tato, 100 and... Or sorry, not, he, he's hoping it's going to hit 100, but he's at 85 right now. Thing is though, Viper's bank is just ridiculous. Yeah, it really is. Like, Tato will drop to pop 120 soon while pushing. And Viper can rebuild. Yeah. Tato's castle on the left stayed up. Got 30 kills. Still has that. Onager shots, though. You need so many Onager hits to kill these elephants. They're so strong. 
and Tato knows it. So he dives in with a couple elephants to shoot them, and the light cap kill the onagers as well. Viper could die to this. Viper could definitely die to this. If Viper loses his production, his TCs, his castle, his monastery, it could have happened really quickly here, Nilly. This is a scary, scary push indeed. Now Tato's selling more resources. He knows I need to put every single resource into this push. This one needs to work or I'm dead. Yeah, everything to the push for Tato. Everything. And Viper's hoping if I can hold from this and then I can take out the castle on the left and take out all of his eco, this will be my game. But this could go either way. Flip a coin, people, because I do not know how to call this. I want to say Tato. I think the army's just unkillable. Tato was missing the traps. He had three traps this whole time, didn't send them forward properly. Could have already killed the castle, maybe even two. Could have maybe even threatened the monastery in the back. And Viper, he just needs to produce his resources. are still looking good when it comes to food. Would now a big problem for yeah, him. Yeah, but the, the elephant archers are killing the skirms pretty quickly. And yeah, you're right. Viper doesn't have the wood to produce more skirms. Two-handed swordsmen. They might only cause food, but they are still two-handed swordsmen. They will not touch this group of elephant archers that has... 110 kills already for Tato. This is and insane. Still six and a half thousand HP left. <laughs> and Viper took out the castle on the left. Tato has a big enough army to maybe hold from that though, so he won't fully lose his eco. You could argue that Tato's done as much eco to Viper's e as much damage to Viper's eco as Viper has done to him. What a game! But wait a second, Nilly. I'm starting to see a whole lot, a whole lot of yellow. Tato's not advancing much further. Viper's closing in on the elephant archers. Tato has no gold. Oh no! 70 farmers, but can't really get onto enough light cap there. The raid at the left hand side was so good. If only Tato had a wall before uh, his castle, that would have been so nice. Tato now continues to push through the center. Viper on 30 on wood again, though. The castle's still firing away. And Tato can maybe focus on the push in the center a bit more. Yeah, they're both really on the ropes, though, right? Like, they both hit 150 pop and hit a point of oh no. Um, I like what Viper's done with the skirms, though. Tato hasn't shown a lot of light cap in a minute, so he's advancing forward, and every elephant he kills will be so hard for Tato to replenish. Oh. Tato thought he killed the castle, already shift clicked on the next one, but he didn't finish the job. Ooh, true. That's a very good point, Viper. But what is this? Tato's onager cutting through the trees? What was that? Tato onager to get cutting to the woodline. To the, he to knows where the Viper's woodline has to be. <laughs> what a wild thing to think about right now. And it's actually really important that he gets there. Oh. Nightcap engaging in the side where all the harbardiers are, though. Now moving around. Beautiful move. Most of the harbardiers are dying. And that means the skirms are unprotected. What? The traps, Nilly. The traps. The two-handed swordsmen are here for the traps. Tato doesn't have gold. Tato cannot make more traps. And Viper's oh, castle so stand. And Viper has will kill the light cap, and he still has more skirms out there to push back those elephants. Oh, now the push into the left-hand side woodline needs to be the uh, hero, but Karambits and a cast are already waiting for him there. So if he sends in like six light calf, yeah, it will kill maybe five builds. I was thinking he was maybe onager cutting there in order to treb Viper's castle. So it, it felt like he was thinking ahead a lot on which castle to go to next. But have we hit that point of the game where Viper's eco? wins him the game. The Relics wins him the game. The Two-Handed Swordsman wins him the game. The fights haven't been pretty. The KD's been pretty awful. But, like we said, he could do this forever, and Tato cannot repeat that push again. Not to the same degree. Yeah, that's the big problem, right? He is at zero Relics, no Golden Come Viper still even has some gold in his base that he could mine. Still has 2,000 gold at the top, and no necessity to mine it faster yeah exactly just take his time hasn't really been using the gold anyways and honestly my biggest worry for tato i mean I, I don't know where he's going to do damage to viper because of viper's castle setup but how does tato stop the two-handed swordsman and the halves from just going into his eco there's only one castle that castle is not going to defend it enough here tato getting herbal medicine right now to heal up those elephants <laughs> <laughs> oh you have to love it that's so smart oh. I feel like so many things that these guys have done in this series already are things that only they would do, right? Like yeah. Heavy Scorpion from Tato in the previous game, only him. 
Um, maybe like, you know, the Japanese CA, the Yasama Towers, the, the Cannon Galleon from Viper in the previous game, only him. The the Swordsman now with Malay, and like the, the, the sneakiness of getting the Relic and all that stuff. It's just so them, man. Mm -hmm. But it, it, Tato's, I guess, going to build up towards for one more push here. One more big push, which will be mainly comprised of light calf. Hmm. Can he find something like left hand side? It's fully walled though, right? Yeah. How are we, are we <laughs> expecting this to go? I'm, I'm, I'm laughing because Viper's like, where are the elephant archers? I don't understand. I don't see <laughs> them anywhere, and they're just healing up. Tato wins a heads up fight if he gets all his. Yep. Stuff together. Yep. He's got Dingus. tons of light cap. Yeah, but Tato just needs to. No, Viper just needs to snipe the elephant archers. That's it. Kill yep. six elephant archers, lose 80 units, you're fine. Yeah, as long as you're walled, I think. Like, Viper almost should buy stone and build more castles. Like, just in case this gets bad, it, it's clear to me the castles and the fortifications are going to be key for him to hold. Yeah, this is a good start. Obviously, the elephant archers are going to have to show up because Tata doesn't want to lose his area of his eco. And now Viper's going to see it. And I think you're right. I think he will lose 80 units here. I do not think he gets home, but he wants the elephant archer kills. Kills two. Back. Gets the third. Nope. Doesn't get the third. Gets the third. There you go. Good fight for Viper. Amazing fight for him. Light cab as well from Tato. Try and get in. Viper tries a trap. Doesn't exactly pan out, but Tato will lose all the units anyways. 19 and elephant archers. I'm a bit surprised how Tato took that engagement after he sent like 30 light cap to the top. Yeah. Why not fight with your full army? Yeah. It's fair to say Tato probably feels like, maybe even felt like after that Omega push through the middle. That if that didn't work, that it might be over for him. He, he's got 90 farmers, right? But I'm sure he's seen it from Viper, and I'm sure he's felt this against Viper many times before. It's just Viper's going to slowly wear him down right now. Yeah. And it's crazy enough, but this comes all down to the Sneaky Seeds Workshop at minute 14. Yep. Because that forced Tato into the defense, and Viper could get three relics kind of uncontested. And then it contested Relic afterwards. So it was a 4v1 Relic split, and that allowed him to now get in full control in the late game. And that's why this game is the best game ever, right? Like, that's why if you are a really talented RTS player and you start to grind right now, it's going to take you years <laughs> to, to be near that top because you have to know that, right? It, it, everyone, like, these guys knew all the tiny little intricacies as Tato snipes the Bomber Cannons. Very nice job there. Um... It's just all set up for a grander plan. It's all tiny little intricate details. And Nilly, you can even have the knowledge then, as you and I know, and then you screw up with one tiny detail and it all falls apart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just crazy stuff here. Population higher for, for Viper. Every elephant archer he kills, a big talking point. He killed a couple on the left side. And Tato just still can't really push. It feels like Tato can make light calf forever though. So he's not gonna go anywhere anytime soon. Do you think hideout could be a better map if there were more extra gold spots at the site? Mm, I think that's why a map like bypass exists. Like, you mean like, Okay. well, I guess bypass also has the opening through the middle, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the, here they'd have to create the opening through the middle. But, I don't know. I like Hideout for what it is. Um, I think it, it's too established of a map to do like a... To, to change too much with it. That's my feeling. And if you wanted to maybe have different tweaks, there's probably ways to, to do a different type of map. Like you could do for the next NAC, you could do like the Hippo Doubt or something. Hippo Doubt. Hi, hideout Hippo or Hippo Hideout or something, you know. That'd be fun. Ooh, you could maybe... I could see a map guy making the wood in the middle kind of shape as part of the hippo face. <laughs> and then you could... Okay. Yeah, you could do it. But like... Yeah. You know what would Players be... really love that. Yeah. <laughs> mm. 
I mean, I like it personally because I feel like there's a lot of gold on the map. But I don't on know. This one. I think it's decent enough. It has less than Arabia, no? Mm, sure. Yes, I think by like two or three tiles, yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe an extra neutral gold that's always fixed to the left side or like the side that is furthest from Seven? the players. It's five. Oh god, Tato, Tato, I don't know if you want to be here, bro. I don't know if you so. You need to leave. Can you imagine if Viper just ran through and walled the other got, side? Got, oh god. Got a, got a vill behind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like call an ambulance, but not not for me. <laughs> or not for you. <laughs> oh man. I mean, there's not obviously there's a lot of wood left, but compared to what we started with. There is not near as much after all the onager cutting here. Yeah, only 92,000. Oh, no, wait. It's only one kind of trees that are selected. Only 208,000. 208,000. That's that's true. Oh, yeah. Different types. So game will be over soon. Yeah, it's just, unfortunately, the Malay are good enough to hold forever. But they're not good enough to finish the game. So Tato's got to find, like, this gives Tato other opportunities to sell some food, get some gold, and go Have for another Have you Okay. Interesting. Harbor the Heavy Scorpion is obviously really good. Yeah. Heavy Scorpions have extra attack bonus against elephant units. Yeah. So, would be a good one. What else is interesting about hideout is like the longest hideout games have been once the level was at the highest. Whereas, like, in all of group stage of Golden Plat, it felt like we never saw a game go well past an hour. But suddenly it's like oh. Doubt and Tato, and then you got like Hera and Yo, and now you got the Viper Tato. The lack of areas, I guess, to control is maybe part of it, and the way the wood line's positioned makes it really tough for players. When, when players are even, it makes it tough for games to end quickly. No, no, no. But 117 eco kills from Viper. Like maybe five, ten minutes ago, he moved forward with cannons and lost it. And I'm worried. He's going to potentially lose all of his siege again. Tato sees it. There's not a lot of halves here in Viper's army at the moment. I, I think Viper should delete all the scums. Hmm, interesting. Well, they're going to get deleted for him, potentially. Nice body That's block, nice. though. He's skirm walling. What is this? <laughs> there's the quick wall, and then there's the skirm wall. That was smart. That's sick. That's sick. And now Viper's pushing in, and he has four traps, four bombard cannons, eight scorpions. This is a really tough army to kill. Viper should send villagers forward now. And I think if he builds barracks and siege workshops, he can't lose the forward position. Yeah. I'd really like to see uh, like towers to fortify this position. Buying some stone and building a couple keeps could be really good. Uh, I think Malay also get Bombard Tower, which I think is underrated yeah, play in this scenario. Mm -hmm. But also you just take out the castle. I'm sure Tata's going to lose a lot of hope and Viper brought more than enough siege. And if he's worried, he could potentially leave with all this siege now, but Tato's going to pounce. It's just a little tough to get excited about Tato killing Bombard Cannons when we know that Viper's going to have endless gold with all five of those relics. Uh, I think maybe in T Tato's head, it's like, wow, he invested so much into this push. This will buy me at least 10 more minutes, but Viper actually has more gold floating than this push costed. Yeah, that's true. And Viper knows the situation, will toss away skirms to kill more Elephant Archers. It'll get harder and harder for Tato. But Tato, last I checked, was at 89 farmers. He's now at 92. <laughs> so it uh, doesn't matter. Finally calls the GG. I guess he felt it was inevitable as Viper was coming in on the left. And man, an interesting game. But you got to say, that Siege Workshop, minute 14, the scouting from Viper, the map control with the light calf, he set the pace of the game again. And then when Tato came to push or when Tato tried to stop his push, Viper was able to shift into the next area of the map. And Viper finds himself up 2-0, and he is looking really good today. Yeah, that's so true. Like, it was so clean. And then it's just, he obviously is one of the players that established the mindset the most. Okay, let's not finish the game. Yep. Let's win it whenever. Yep. Right? And he's just doing all the steps to take all the chances away from Tedder winning the game. And sometimes it takes longer, right? Because Bengalis are reasonable against Malay and Tato still had a relic, still had some map control, still had a lot of units. But Viper methodically took all the weapons away from Tato. Yeah.
really good. We got to see all the melee bonuses at play there. And I think there's that kind of circles me back to Tato. We did see the unique text for Tato, but it felt like when we saw Pikes, when we saw Mahayana, when we saw um, Elite Elephant Archer, it was all after Viper had taken strong advantages. Um, and, you know, yes, Tato's gold was a bit awkward. Yes, Viper punished it. I still feel like I would have loved to have seen Tato, especially with so many of the games he's done it with humans and other civs. Just go light cap in this game. Compete for map control, right? The forward villager would have never been something Viper could have could have done. Wouldn't have invested as much in Castle Age. Gives you more opportunity, right, to make Viper make some mistakes. Just sitting back, I get it. It's a closed map. It's a boom map. I think it, for someone like Viper, just gives him too much confidence and too much opportunity. They have started game three. And uh, we were... Talking a lot about the wall and what sieves we could see and curveballs all around here, Nilly. <laughs> because it's not the Burgundians and it's not the Burmese for Viper. It's actually the Poles. And then Tato is gone for the Britons here. So first time we've seen these civilizations face off all season. This is interesting. Okay, Poles considered to be a top five civilization and arena. The wall, well, basically a neutral arena wall in the center. I'm still a bit surprised that we have never seen them and that Viper considers them so high. Mobility is not really a big factor on this map because it is tough to get to the other side, especially if they have a castle set up. Yeah. So... We might have a point where neither civilization goes for a forward castle, right? We've seen a lot of unique unit play from the Bohemians, the Portuguese, the Spanish, the even like Burgundians. Like, I know that Viper's not going to go for an early castle to go for uh, the... Shoot, I can't even remember the name now. The Hammer Obuch. Boys. The Yeah, the Obel. Thank you. I, I doubt that's the thing. Normally, it's more so range units you're going to see. Maybe Tata wants to go Longbowman, but I could see both players being happy with just booming here, in all honesty. Um, okay, booming. Let's think about it. Poles, typically if we boom, want to play an Arbalest timing early on. But Britons might be one of the worst sifts to play that against. Yeah. Um, here's a, here's I a, don't think Poles can fully boom. Here's a question. Mm-hmm. Viper knows you can't vil rush the middle, right? Yeah, he should. He should. Okay, because because I if you could do that, fast feudal into tower rush into lots of farms and eco behind it would sound really good for the poles. And Viper's got three on wood, so it makes me think feudal build. He could go feudal eco boom like he did with the Malay in the previous game. That could be decent enough for the poles. Well, one of the Malay reasons to go for it is. Because you don't want to get rushed on yeah. hideout, right? Yeah. You can't get rushed here. Yeah. Also, you're delaying your relics a bit. I think Castle Age is where it goes. But what we are playing then, I'm clueless. Yeah. So to explain for people that are curious about the walls. So you cannot attack the walls with villagers because there's this weird thing where the villagers actually repair the walls. That's the way the map is designed. Not in Dark Age. In Feudal Age, you can. In Feudal Age, you can. Oh, in Feudal Age, you can attack the walls. Yeah, you can tower rush in Feudal Age. Ah, okay. Well, so it's funny. So I, obviously, I brought the map into the map pool. And then I'm over here like, yeah, players need to be prepared, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then I was already really disappointed in Licks. I think the very first series. <laughs> and then Lix comes in here after I'm already like, oh, it's clear he didn't practice anything. And he starts to attack the walls. And that's actually when I learned you, if you attack the walls with villagers in Dark Age, it won't do anything. But I think he backed away, just abandoned the strategy. I guess he must have been in Dark Age. So it's actually news to me that you can attack the walls in Feudal and still break through. So that means Vipers, if he knows that much, could consider to do that. But we just haven't seen anyone do it. So I, I just... Never really you're been kind of giving discuss. it away, right? And then you have to build a tower and your yeah. opponent still has far away gold and stone. Yeah. Like on Arena, the tower rush simply gives you the option that your second tower can block a lot of resources. Yep, yep. You don't have that this here. Will be more tricky here. No. Cheaper town centers for the Britons. Very long, long range for the Britons. 
you think of what the poles do lots of cav maybe some range units britons have more range on their range units and they've got access to help vipers clicked up here this does seem to me like this is a feudal age boom from the viper which the more i think about it it's definitely not as strong and as exciting with with the poles than it is the malay in the previous game but what it might do is potentially allow some type of like fast imp right because the food count should be pretty insane in the long run why are we going pop 21 if we want to fuel a boom yeah I, I i don't think i we i haven't seen it right but i can't see a world where this is better than burgundians he has burgundians on the draft right let me see uh, uh yes he does I mean, that, that's pretty wild to me, to be honest, but it and is Burmese Viper. Burmese as well. Yeah. I mean, Burmese would probably be a bad matchup against the Britons, and he was probably scared of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He is a very comfortable player with the poles, but this seems like a bit of an adapted build from Viper. I'm not sure that it's my favorite build yet. <laughs> oh, I hate the mining camp of Tato. Didn't he have a perfect one, including the stone? Mm, well, it's not perfect for gold, right? Because he can't take the fourth tile. I think okay, he's going to do one maybe better Maybe he wants to you. build a TC? Yeah, TC? he's, he's going to TC between those, and then the other TC will be in his woodbine. That's my guess. Okay. I will allow it. Yeah. So, so Viper going to mine gold. Stone. Uh, on gold instead of stone. Yeah. Why? Another notable thing here. I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So am I. <laughs> like the idea is poles get 10% of their farm's food when you build the farm around the full work, so that's a nice boost. Poles also then receive some gold when they're mining stone. And what was changed after poles were introduced is that they get less gold from mining stone than they did when they first came out. But it's still two resources for one action. And what a lot of players will do with any excess stone is they'll actually just sell it. Like, sell some stone, buy some food. And that seems to be the ticket for most arena players. So I think this is Viper saying, haven't necessarily tested this. Uh, maybe just, I didn't get a civilization I wanted on the draft. This is Tato's home map after all. I'm 2-0 up. So let's, like, go for one of my more experimental picks here. Hmm. Uh, yeah, feels like it. But then even if you want to experiment... Isn't Burgundian still better yes. than Poles? I, I think so. Yeah. Three relics. It's like nine villagers for Burgundians. Yep. Three relics right away. You have a really smooth, fast castle build. And again, it's a bit more established from what we've seen. You would have had the wooden farm upgrade in the Dark Age, which feels like so nice, so smooth. But, you know, Nilly, you know what's going to happen. Tats is going to play like a beast, and somehow Viper's going to figure it out, and then we're just going to be like, well, that's why he did it. <laughs> okay, I, I'm, I'm happy to be uh, along the ride, but because <laughs> right now, I'm completely clueless on yeah. how he wants to play it. Yeah. We are allowed to disagree with the Viper, right? Those are, I think that's still allowed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's good, because I, I disagree with him here as well. Is up at a decent time. Very curious to see what his resources will look like. Very smooth build, I have to say. Much faster to the castle age than I would have expected. Both players going for the long house wall to the edge. I know you want to see Tato TC between the stone and gold. Do you see a siege workshop? Tato villager. Tato villager. Nice quick wall. Do you see a siege workshop going up for either player to potentially try and pressure? Uh, Tato has three on gold, so he doesn't really want to pressure too much here, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think okay. it will just be a boom. Yeah, makes sense. Viper dropping another full work, which indicates a lot of farms. Is there like a 2TC fast imp with a crap ton of farms behind it? Is that like a possibility here for Viper? Uh... Why 2TC? I think you have enough food to always go 3TC. Yeah, and also that you've got the wood saved up for the TCs as well. Viper Scout is weak. The expectation is he'll eventually get his relics, though, so he'll heal that back up. Tatsu goes for a wood TC and a wood TC. Sorry, Nilly. But it's Nilly, man. That's more standard, I think. 
Oh, oh, there we oh, go. 4 TC. There we Ooh, go. Oh, hello. Wow, 4 TC and 4 eco upgrades. Where are you getting those resources from, my friend? Yeah. Only with Britons could you justify this, though. And he's not going for a monastery. Yeah, delaying that. And I don't think he should add it now because I think he needs the wood for farms. Yeah, 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 yeah. No way, no way. Yeah. He needs to get to 24 farms to afford all 40 seas running. Yeah. That will be a tough task. He can place five. <laughs> well, I mean, what players will typically do is they will That's have eight. the villagers that finish the gold TC go to gold. Then you build up to buy some food, right? So we'll probably see a bit of market use. Um, I am of the thinking that you shouldn't add the TC until you're going to have the resources to produce at it forever. But mm -hmm. he's on four TCs and all of them are in queue right now. So this does give him more villagers to work with in the future. I've noticed that with like some of the greedy four TC booms. I'm just so against having TC idle time. But <laughs> sometimes it's actually worth it to add those TCs and have a bit of idle time. Yeah, well, idle time is completely fine in the sense, like, even if the TC only builds one more villager, yeah. in comparison to you wouldn't have the TC, yep. you actually have another villager. Exactly, yeah. It all comes down to just vill count at the end of the day. And Tato's farms are coming in now. Might see him buy 100 food or so, but he, he doesn't even believe so because he's pulling villagers off of the gold to build these farms. Uh -huh. Let's check res collected. I think it'll be more telling in a minute. But Viper has collected more food, maybe to be expected with the poles. It is spot on with res collected. Very close. Uh, expect Tato to catch up, though, because Tato's on four TCs. And Viper has seven <laughs> fewer villagers right now. That's really solid. Wheelbarrow from neither player, both with four eco upgrades. Wheelbarrow now coming in for the Viper. And Tato will have a solid advantage, mainly because Viper is already collecting the resources. Yeah. Uh, the relics. Feels like if Viper knew Tato was four TCs, and he's not seeing any aggression from Tato right now, so he could assume that. I feel like maybe a bit of siege pressure might eventually make sense. Just to like, like let's say Tato wants to build the castle, or let's say Tato doesn't know what's going to come from behind the siege. Just to put some questions into Tato's mind and force Tato to potentially make mistakes. But 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 if Tato sees. A mangonel or a ram arriving at the 19 minute mark, he always knows, okay, this is behind three TCs. And you didn't build a one TC castle schlachter at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So he would so, just know, yeah. It's it's always fake pressure. Yeah. At 18 minutes. Yeah, see fake pressure works against me. <laughs> so like, you know, I, I I even think fake pressure work like I think we saw instances where even Yo in the other semifinal was a little bit like because Hera forced reactions from him or like did something, Yo made mistakes, right? So the idea is like forcing mistakes. But I think on a closed map with these two, it's like they both expect the other one to not make a mistake and they feel it would be a mistake for them to overinvest. <laughs> yeah. Like the, the thing is, if Viper went for aggression here, like with an 18 minute siege workshop, it would just be so bad against so many strategies that Tato went yeah. for. But what about now? Like just just one, just one. Well, what is it going to achieve? There's one defensive mangonel from Tato. Well, that's it. Happens. You Tato is make a defensive mangonel, and then maybe you yeah, win but the then, then you're or... just even. Well, uh, that, that's counting that you out micro the opponent. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I, I but, get it. But they're at home. <laughs> yeah. Like, you, you're just hoping, okay, if my mangonel micro is way better, then force mangonel fights, yes. But you're not investing into fewer resources, which should be the goal. Yeah. I guess Viper has belief in this eco, right? He's so far behind in farms right now, but the food count's still kind of close. Res collected's pretty close, too. The Viper has had the relics for a bit longer, which has certainly helped. The Viper building up the stone count. And Viper even buying stone, so he wants a forward castle. If this were to go Trebor, big advantage to the Britons if Warwolf comes in. And that is an if. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we see instances where Warwolf is too expensive because you have to research it out of the castle, which produces the Trebs. I also think it costs wood and gold to research. I don't know, though, Nilly. Um, 800 wood, 400 gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, in my opinion, a perfect cost for the tech because it is really strong, but it also comes at a cost. I think it costs seven 
50 food, 450 gold before it. Viper. Right. I think it got recently changed. Viper not choosing to fight back with other villagers against the Komodo dragon. But he's poles, so everything's fine. <laughs> and he was going to convert Tato's villager there, and Tato's villager got deleted. Because that would have been pretty horrible for Tato to allow Viper to build an outpost in there and see what he's up to. Yeah. Uh, would have been ugly. Three versus three relics. Now checking into pikemen. And as I said, like typical approach here from Poles was to go for Arbalest. Maybe Viper just tries to counter and just opens mass skirmishes. Mm, maybe. If Viper's, um, gonna, Viper's gonna break through and he will be able to see what Tato's going to do. Tato, from our perspective, seems to be guessing correctly though. Viper's getting cav upgrades. So Viper might be considering stables and there's the stables. Mm -hmm. Tato also, if he... This is kind of funny, the difference between Zawal and Arena. If this was Arena, Tato could look at Viper's castle, see the attack upgrades aren't there, and know that Viper's not going for skirms. But he can't see the castle because it's not his wall. So he would actually have to go over there to get that information. So it makes it a bit trickier, which is, I think, part of why aggression has worked so well on um, Zawal. Because... Tato should have tried more outposts. After trying one, just build them further back. Yeah, you could see that. Daily, can you say the tech that's coming in for Viper? Because I struggle. Uh, bloodlines. <laughs> <laughs> no, the other one. Imperial Age? Ah, uh, uh, the other one. There's no other tech being researched. Oh, it's only okay. The two. The, all right, all right. Well, this lock, this lock, the tech is coming in now for Viper, which will make the gold cost on his knights cheaper. It's like sixty percent still. I don't think they changed it. I think it's still sixty percent off on the gold mm -hmm. cost. And Viper hoping to convert another scout to his side. And the blocking wow. there from Viper actually got the job done. That was nasty. That was so sick. Double scout now attacking. Spearman trying to force the fight. And Tato might get a good heads up here. Sees the knights. Yep. Sees the upgrades. Yep. And he would have seen the scout as well. Had some upgrades had he paid attention. Uh, Tato really forcing the issue here with his castle spot. Because he's an imp faster. He's actually also made petards. You only need one petard to break down these walls. The wall HP never goes up, but that's easy to forget about. Matato making two. It will certainly mean he can make a bigger gap in the wall. And uh, Viper killing some pikemen there before he sees Halb, which is the perfect time to fight. No cavalier upgrade for him yet. That's on the way, as well as a big line of archer rangers for, for the Viper. So he's going to go... Oh, Tato needs to wall the two. top quickly. This could be problematic if the knights are coming Mark in. It. This could be quite a headache. Mark it. Building, house, house, building, market, gate, uh, units are through. Oh, that's so ugly. Oh, that's such a headache. Yeah. It's going to have trebs, though, Nilly, before Viper has any. And does have halves on the field. Now, for Viper, there's been a theme today. And it's like, get get a little bit of a lead, get some units through, force Tata to react, and then I will win the fights elsewhere. And this is the perfect moment for him to do exactly that here. Tato is going to be kicking himself. He didn't get those walls down. Oh, yeah. that That's like <laughs> easier said. But, uh, no one else to blame but himself, right? It was yep. so transparent that those knights are a threat yep. that they could be coming through any moment. Yeah, and, and now Viper gets to, to spread his wings and try and fly around here. But he's almost trying to leave with some of the cav. He's not actually finding the damage he wants. Mm -hmm. And just 37 halves in Q right now for Tato. Pretty good. But Viper's got skirms. And he's got Trebs already and Cav to die for Tato's Trebs. And now where are the Halbs? Tato with the gate. Saves the trebuchet. Only said gate. Only said gate enough. Yeah. Only fletching on those castles for now. Mm, but look at the tech coming in from Tato. He knows how to hold. And his Halbs can all leave his main eco now. That big old mess of his main eco. And if he could turn this into a Treb War, Viper would have some massive problems. Yeah, and that's why we think Riddens are so good here. Harbidi is taking good fight against the Cavaliers now. The trap could die. Some repair on it. And Sados even saves that one. And that's why we say Riddens are so good on this map. And Viper does have skirms against Halbs, but skirms can die to Trebs as well. And I, the thing is, you never really know until you know that your opponent has completed Warwolf. Viper's <laughs> going to know soon. And those Trebs are now not going to miss their shots. Viper's going to have a lot of repairing to do there. So does Tato, though. Tato could lose his oh. castle here. But Viper can't repair. Those Trebs would splash damage. The Vilts yeah. are dying, no? Oh. I 
I imagine they might. I'm actually not sure. I haven't seen villagers die. I just look at the traps. Sorry, villagers. What do you make as Viper now? More of the same, I think, right? More skirms, more calf. Hope for the best. This is so tricky. This is really tricky. Now, Tato even thinking about adding some light calf here against the skirmishers. But trap traps are his main unit here. Yeah. And Tato Viper. should wall way more. Like just every gate everything around. Especially once when you're through, you gate it up so Viper can't come back through. Yeah. He looks pretty well defended behind this. We see supplies for Tato as he thinks about an answer to the to the skirms. Sure. He might eventually go champion, but he just can't stop the trebs if you're Viper. The caver they might be cheap, but it's just not strong enough here. Yeah. Missing the last armor, the castle can help out quite a bit. The harbor is getting quite some damage. Another trap being attacked heavily, but not going down. And there was another 10 cavaliers dying. Pato has played so well today. If you're just getting here, the scoreline does not reflect how close these games have been. Yes, Viper's been able to get small leads as he's researching coinage right now, which does okay. not help in a 1v1 whatsoever. Viper should know this. Um, well, maybe he wants to sling Tato a win. <laughs> I mean... They're teammates, right? So, <laughs> For those that don't know, coinage saves you resources, uh, saves you on the tax that you are taxed on when you send resources to an ally. And sometimes players confuse that with something like guilds, where if you research guilds, you could get a better price at the market when you sell food and wood. Um, I think it's the most one of the most confusing texts in the game, Nilly. The amount of times I see low elo players click coinage because they want gold. And they're like, oh, there's a coin. Coinage? Gold? Perfect. <laughs> it's, like, it's very common. Okay. Well, we talked about why we didn't like polls. And I think we're seeing a whole lot of that right now. I'm just I mean, at least against Britons, it seems like it's so tough to ever make the units to deal with this. Now it's actually time for Obu. <laughs> yeah, true, and then you don't have your castle. <laughs> yeah, stone at the front. Could go for two castles. Yeah. Viper's gonna go heavy cav archer here. Viper's cutting the top. Ooh. Does Tato, Tato see Tato that? Spent. That's kind of he a funny the move. Harvard, yes. He should know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, sees, he knows. He sees, he sees. Sneaky move from Viper there. Okay. Tato's swordsman pushing through. Viper's calf will not be able to break through. Great awareness there from Tato. Three relics for both. Tato taking his time here, much like Viper did in the previous game. You might think that he's giving Viper time, but he's applying a lot of pressure. And even though Viper's cavalier are cheap, Viper's cavalier have just been wasted constantly trying to snipe these trebuchets. Amazing defense from Tato. Tato now destroyed double the value of his opponent and Viper loses control over his two front gold spots. Yep. So Viper on a timer now. I think ranges from Tato, if you're seeing heavy cab archer, like the only way you lose this game is if you don't have even just skirms of your own. But I think you might have the gold to go for Arbalest too. This heavy cab archer is the first thing that he's really been up against that can take out the halbs and the, the two-handed swordsman quite quickly. Still no champion upgrade for Tato, though. That's definitely something he has to consider. <laughs> Viper just clicked banking, which is the follow-up from Coinage, and then canceled <laughs> that, and then went for guilds. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, maybe Viper... Oh, there's something with even more coins. Let's get that. Yeah, exactly. It gets even more confusing. I feel bad for people, but... It's kind of, it's fun, you know? It's like heated shot when people confuse it with chemistry. It's like, oh, they don't know yet. <laughs> uh, true, true. Really confusing. <laughs> it's like, he did shot. Oh, his arrows are on fire. What can I do that does that? Hmm, how about this thing that has flame, or it has fire and says heat? <laughs> uh, it's also funny that ballistics is shown as a bomber a cannon bomber shooting cannon. a building. Yes! Bomber cannon shooting a building. It does not work against buildings, and it does not work for bomber cannons. <laughs> that one's the worst one, actually. Of all of them, I think. Especially because they're so it's so common. It, ballistics is a huge upgrade. So, anyways. Um, this I mean Viper's trying to raid here, but Tato just slowly grinding him down, and Viper's population's still good. Feels like one big ball of bombard cannons. 
Like four or five bomber cans with a big heavy cav archer light cav mass. Maybe then Viper could do it. But as I say it, bomber cannon will go down for him. Yeah, it's just so tricky right against the traps. They can just camp behind the castle. Crazy range on the traps there with 17. And what, what can you really achieve with your army? Yep. Heavy cav archers for the poles do lack final armor. I think they lack Parthian as well. And there's our upgrades that really look to if you want to have strong cab archers. It's not the worst, though. You do get thumb ring. Mm -hmm. well, damage output is the same as fully upgraded heavy CA. Yep. The just the problem that you die to skirms and longbows so much quicker. Yeah. And Tato is actually adding the longbows now because he figures there's no way I lose the castle as he slowly grinds down Viper's buildings. Something I'd like to see from Viper, I guess it's hard for him right now because he's up against it, but I'd like to see him break through the wall on the right. Break through and just mm -hmm. try and raid there. Because, like, the left side, obviously, Tato's walled behind. Also, weird fog of war bug for Viper. If you look at his side of things, that bug is still in the game, apparently. Um, But, yeah, like, the right side, if he could run through there with some Hussars, maybe? Maybe he could get through. Uh, yeah. Or on the other side, it would be nice if Tato actually walled the sides. Yeah, that's true. Tato will, he's good vision, so he will see if Viper sends Cavalier that way. And well, there goes the Cavalier. Oh, Tato opened. would have to pull away. Save from Viper there on the cannons. <gasps> Overchop at the right. Tato with the house, it's not enough, builds a second house. Okay. If he had another Vill, he could trap Viper in there, which would be pretty epic. Can he send something? No, he, he doesn't know enough. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, it's it's hard to think about when you have to micro the army on the front, I suppose. Viper still trying to push Tato in the middle. Hasn't been able to mine any gold and stone here because of Tato's position. And Viper's gonna... He's gonna try and free himself by attacking the wall <laughs> with this cap. Viper's bomber can of micro is hugely important here. Four wolf traps hit Point one, goal. hit two, oh, hit three. Oh, huge shots for Tato. You jinxed it. You oh. jinxed it. He also killed his own halbs here as well, but Tato will take that trade any day. And the Cavalier for Viper haven't been able to escape either. So pretty expensive losses for Viper over the last few moments here. My goodness. We have the unique tech for the Hussars, so splash damage from them. Actually pretty crazy if we get onto proper numbers, but... Yeah, Harbard is still a very reasonable answer to them. What do you think about, as Tato's going to drop a castle now, I was just going to say, what do you think about, like, keeps here for Tato? Mm -hmm. I don't mind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeoman in as well. Yeah. I mean, the castle that he's placing now is going to cover the stone and gold fully. And obviously, you're making longbows, so the castle's still really good. But it, it's especially with Tato being the player here, I'm a little surprised we haven't seen towers. I just don't know if it's necessary. Like... Viper is going to have to work so freaking hard to push these castles back. It's just going to be crazy. He's building more bombard cannons. Might get up to five in total and a trap. So he's doing the right steps to take out buildings. Yeah, true. But Denying can the castle. the question. Denying the castle for now. Not unable to get the trebs. Bombard cannon. Nope. Moving forward for the treb. Hold on. Hold on. Treb down. Not bad. Bombard Another thing that... Down, though. Another thing that maybe Viper could consider, and it's really tricky when you're spending so much food, is Siege Ram. And instead of Bomber Cannons, I think Siege Ram would be really helpful because the Warwolf Trebuchets don't get a lot of value against the Rams, and Halbs and Archers take a long time to kill Siege Ram. Halbs are okayish, and also you need to send in your army, right? Yeah. And your only army that actually can guard those Bombards, uh, those Rams, would be Hussars. That's true. So you send in Hussars and Rams against full halves. Yeah, really tricky. Tato used his longbows, as we were saying that, to snipe two Bombard cans from Viper and also snipes the trap from Viper. And now the castle from Tato's up. Like Viper, he's just slowly going to get ground down here and run out of space. Tato could be mining the forward stone and the forward gold here as well to take more and more resources to mass up more of a push. It's just a slow crawl here. Britons are very tough sieve to push, but they're also a very slow sieve with their own push. So it may take Tato a little bit of time, but he 
He's here all day. He's got nothing else yeah. planned for his day, as far as I know. Not that he needs to run that past me. Um, and, like, he knew he was going to lose games against Viper today, whether he wins the series or not. So, this would be a good start for Tato. And he, what did he win? Three games in a row against ACCM in the best of five. So, he's used to the comebacks. Yeah, and Tato is completely fine just sitting here, right? He does not need to push further. He knows, okay, I'm controlling all the gold and stone. Viper will constantly invest into resources while Tato can just bank up and check into the next units. Yep. And, you know, we've seen instances from Viper in the playoffs where there's a pick that we hadn't seen before. The Mayans on Spiral, for example. Um, this one, a pick where it's it's a weird pick. It's a pick we haven't seen it before. He doesn't win with it, and then you and I are just like, well, didn't fully understand that one, Viper. He did try and find the timings in early imp. He tried to distract Tata with raids and then snipe his trebs, but once Tata defended those trebs, it felt like there was not much Viper could really do to stop the Britons here. I just think if you want to open anything, it has to be like trap skirm, low ego. Yep. Because if if you just get both to 120 builds, Britons always beats Poles. And you need to make something fancy happen. You thought about some mind games in Castle Age. I think those would have had a higher chance than just let Britons play their game. Yeah. Yeah, just something to make it messy. Like the original castle location from Tato was placed with before he even had a barracks, right? Something like if the original castle is to be further back for Tato, I don't know. But Tato played so well. Viper collected a lot of resources. The Polish economy is still no joke. Like, that's crazy that he collected that many more resources than Tato. But score 2-1 here. Like to see it. And uh, finally, Viper gets to pick a home map. All right, so game four. Lands Madness. This is the home map of the Viper. And many people are thinking, what scout civ is he going to go for? Well, he's not going to go for a scout civ unless it's Eagle Scout. He's going for the Mayans here. A great civ, but not your traditional pick here. And then Tato has gone for the Saracens. And I have many fond memories of Tato playing Saracens over the years. So two very different picks here. Game number four between Tato and the Viper. Give me your thoughts, Nilly. We've seen some very interesting builds from Tato here. And oh, let's take a look at the Eagle first, if it can find anything. Three picks in that direction. Four on the other direction. I think shouldn't find too much. A little and... risky to be pushing deer instead of finding your sheep against an eagle, though. Yeah, especially against that score as well, right? Yeah. Oh, and Viper already finds two sheep. Yeah. Or pigs. Yeah, thanks for clarifying. We don't want to offend any any pigs in our chats that would be, you know, not wanting to be confused with sheep. Um, Yeah, so you know, in the past with Tato... He had a strategy called the Tati Rush, which was full YOLO archers. I don't think that's <laughs> viable here. I think I'd be a little surprised. But one of my favorite Tato moments ever was like right when Definitive Edition came out. And I think Saracens had a couple different bonuses too. But he would do this play where he would go on gold. People would assume it was archers. And he'd actually use the market, buy food, and go for tons of scouts here. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily think that that'll be Tato's core strategy, but the potential's always there. And the potential with the Saracens, with villagers on gold and just using their crazy market rates is pretty endless here. Plus you can sell the 200 stone as well, basically get 200 fruit, food that, that early into the game. Yep. Early bloodlines, a very easy option for you. And well, Mayans can easily get overwhelmed by suddenly six Bloodland Scouts showing up. Mm -hmm. The Viper, I think he's probably going to aim to play Mezzo like we've seen a lot more recently, where like in the past it was always Militia or even like Man at Arms into just Archers. These days I'm noticing nearly that players are really utilizing the Barracks and the Eagle production simultaneous to Archer production and Skirm production. So it's like two buildings producing all the time, usually against just mm -hmm. one, because the opponent's never going to make Spearmen out of their barracks, and they're mm -hmm. just going to choose a stable or an archer range. Mm -hmm. I think people kind of learned that when we played a lot of Empire Wars, right? And mm. Mezzo was completely dominating. Yep. You simply, like, have the second building, yep. basically, for free. Yep. I agree. And, and then that combined with players 
being really good against early militia plays right now. Still, the early militia plays can get value, but we're seeing it a bit less now because players are either reacting with walls or preemptively walling, just expecting it. So, uh, Viper's going to have a decent amount of food here. So will Tato. I mean, Tato losing two pigs might feel a little bit bad on Arabia, <clears throat> but on this map, you have the berries underneath your TC, and there's like different groups of deer everywhere. So he's just pushing in the Ibex now, and he's going to click up soon. And if you push another Ibex compared to losing two picks, it's, it is somewhat the same, right? You get the Ibex a bit fast as well, can therefore go on to the fruit bush or berries a bit earlier. Yep. So not the biggest of problems. So I think as we have a pause here, and I imagine they'll resume here shortly, quick look at the maps. I don't think there's any map issues here. Yes. I think everything's fine. Yep. Um, I think Viper's going to have to scout the buildings really well. And I, because I have so much nostalgia with it, I would love to see Tato hide his buildings, but still it feels realistic that he is going to make his military buildings on the front and probably just, like, not be sneaky, but probably just uh, use the market to gain advantages with more units or faster uptime to Castle Age or something. Mm -hmm. So, trying to be as sneaky as possible, you said try to hide them. One of the other options, obviously, is if Tato somehow wins the scout war, right? Feudal Age scout beats a Feudal Age eagle. Yeah. So that would be the dream scenario for Tato. Yeah, yeah that was actually... Oh, God. I mean, there's a game against Vivi on, like, Valley or something. And Vivi lost his scout. He saw Tato had four on gold. And Vivi goes skirm opening. And mm. Tato <laughs> had a stable in the back of his base. And he had just been buying food. And he shows up with Bloodline scouts at Vivi's base, and then also like three scouts to clear Vivi's skirms at his base. It was just, oh, it was the just the dream game. <laughs> what tournament was that? Yeah, that, I, I think I even made it a highlight video, but I, I have not thought of that game after yeah. I cast it. Yeah, it was, it was like the first month of DE because back then players showed as defeated with the score and there was no capture age or anything. Oh, was it, it that recent? I thought it was even ECL or something. Uh, maybe, well, the, the one I'm thinking of was definitely DE. Okay, okay, but okay. it's not a new thing for Tato, right? He's done tricky mind games like that before. So it's just, it's such a cool thing. And it's just another reason to love this Tato guy. But okay, so it sees the two militia. Viper not getting too much value from that. Uh, but I think Viper will be happy to see this stable. But no, he's actually going the other way. And what Viper doesn't see right now could be an issue. Doesn't see the berries yet. He's going to see the berries now. Tato's walled up. Is he missing the market by one tile? He misses the market. By one tile twice! Yeah. And and so he doesn't know it's a stable opening. And he doesn't know there's a market. Tato's going to stone now. It's on that gold, right? Yeah. He should. Like, I think if Tato was going to be taking gold, he would have taken the four tile one. Now he sees Tato on stone and sees the stable. And sees the stable. That's really important intel here for the Viper. But this doesn't mean that Tato can't go for a range. And here's where it gets crazy, right? He goes to stone to sell the stone to then get gold. He's also going to gold, right? So he could make like a million scouts off this, or he could make like four, simply stop and try and rush to Castle Age quickly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For Spearman in the center, if Patrol could get a hit off. Tato, does he want to take the fight? Ooh. Yes, he does. Yeah, I think he thought Viper had clicked the spear forward and that Viper might get called out there. So Tato might slightly regret that. Farming Eco will not be great for Tato here. This is full market to tie up this series. And uh, Tato has all his resources to the front, so I wouldn't be surprised if Viper heavily commits to Feudal Age, actually. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if Viper can wall up his resources... I mean, the scout play might not add any benefit to Tato, at least in economic kills. But I think Tato could build up to kill all of Viper's army. The Viper should make a ton of spears, and he has. He's following up with an archer and two spearmen. Tato will find it very difficult to engage against this. Let's take a look. One archer in no man's land. Oh, so many spearmen. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is this is what um, MBL was saying in the um, Mongols... And, or sorry, Magyars and Mongols game, the Graveyards game in the previous series. 
MBL is saying that you just you just add more spears. Shocker, right, with MBL. But you add more spears. The scout player can't engage against you. And Tato wisely just runs away here. Yeah. Gets bloodlines now. And now the woodline could be in danger. One single archer actually being quite a pain. Yeah. Viper would just probably sit it there. But it would take a long time to kill that. Tato now wants the next army from Viper. And Viper has continued to produce out of this barracks, man. It's just been Spearman after Spearman after Spearman. Because he knows that Tato's going to go for big numbers here. Especially oh, man. against the, all those bloodlines. Now, finally, the archer range. And Tato, he just needs to kill against the archer. Yep. So maybe one skirmisher could already... Make life way easier for him. Yeah, he's super housed right now, Tato. He's going to fall behind in villagers because of that. We didn't remind people Mayan start with the extra vill, but that's the case here. Viper has not taken any losses at home. He's, for the most part, had the perfect numbers of spearmen, but there's an opportunity here for Tato now. And now another villager goes down on the wood line. It's just so much pressure for Viper, and Tato committed so much here to go for scouts, which hasn't been able to get the damage done yet. Mm -hmm. And we often say scouts are so good here because you want to have all the map control, but at some point you need to pressure and, oh, Tato abandons this area, that's costly. Yeah, so he does not have a actual wood line at the moment. Has to go for the blacksmith. This is, I mean, look at how much he has on gold. He's in gold in two different spots right now. <laughs> this oh, wow. is full Saracens. We, we say... We want players to make use of their bonuses, right? Well, Tato is doing <laughs> that. Uh, and the villagers can move into the woodline again afterwards, so yeah. not the biggest official. That's, that's true. Yeah, it's not like he had to delete the lumber camp in a panic. The Viper has uh, nine infantry units right now. Nine infantry units and still has archers and is actually going for the infantry armor, which I think makes perfect sense. Very nice control from him. Sides. I feel like the archer range needed, was needed earlier. Yeah. Or maybe you open with the range, force Viper into skirms, then go crazy scouts. I think scouts are fine. Just like the first skirm can help out so much. Yeah. Well, this is this could be it. You got to take a lot of units here. It's funny. It, it definitely feels like more units is better sometimes in war, nearly. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. Eagle, a bit out of position, could be taken. Oh man, the villagers have to run as well. Viper with so much aggression. Yeah, and, and a lot of eco behind this, right? So Tato needs to clear up soon. Tato would have to win three games in a row against Viper if he loses this game right here. And that would be a tough, tough task with how good Viper is and how good he's playing today. More archers coming forward from Viper. Not many spears. The skirms have done their job and Tato's gonna uh, pounce here. And the engagement wasn't the best engagement, but it wasn't the worst either. He is going to push Viper back. Okay, gets all the archers as well. That's really important. Spearman on the wrong side of the engagement. Might get another villager kill though. And simply more spearmen arriving. How many spearmen did Viper build this game? Like 15? Feels like it. Tato exposed villager. Tries to get the quick walls. Eagle's going to doink. Get sir. And oh man, Tato's only got six scouts and three skirms. And Viper has more archers here. Viper can go for the kill on that gold. Ooh, so intense. And those villagers are low HP. Archers could indeed go in. Easily find a kill. Yeah. And Tato's now torn. Do I defend myself because I'm behind? Or do I go get a counterattack in? He's going for the counterattack, but obviously that now means he's exposed. Viper should also have some level of recognition. The scouts are not here right now. They will come to my base. So I'm expecting Viper to group up units at home. He's doing a pretty good job on the front, though. Kills five villagers, or has killed five villagers so far in this game. And he's going to click Castle Age. Wow. Oh, man. And Tedo, obviously. Yeah, he can get to Castle Age pretty quickly, which he will. The question is, what will he go for? Is it the triple archer range CA play or the triple stable knight play? Yeah, I know. Seriously. Tato wants a villager kill. Moments like these, you could maybe see Viper go for a quick wall because he's not micring on the front. He is really far ahead, he'll feel. But no realistic quick wall from him because Tato had the blocks down. And just when you think Tato's finished, guys, he uses the market again and he clicks up the castleage. Impressive. Where's he on gold, though? Nowhere, really. Yeah. That's the big headache. Maybe some gold at the top. 
Tato did not scout the gold at the top, Tristan. No. That's just that's just unfortunate, honestly. It's, the scouting is all right. Builds. I think he's sending builds. He, he, he knows that there has to be gold. He should could outpost it. I, I agree with taking the... Oh, my God. Oh, my no God. No oh, way. my God. Oh, my... What? What? No. Ah. What is that? Oh, that's so bad. Well, now he's got to take the other oh. gold. And now he has to walk further. And this is already pretty bad for him. And he doesn't want to take that gold because that gold's too exposed. And he's only going to find a stone here. And he doesn't want a stone. He wants a freaking gold. Oh, that's so unlucky for him. He did not need that, Nilly. Not with Viper with loads of spearmen and archer numbers and Viper about to hit the castle age. Maybe a moment for Tato to get some value, though. Uh, he's got his skirms in a good position. Viper's eagle, but the though. The one eagle kills all the skirms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he just never found that gold. He's, at least the stone is a positive, but the prices will not get much better over time here. Positive would be Viper forgot double bid axe, so that is a little awkward from Viper, but what a good job from Viper to play defense here. Small walls everywhere. He's on so many different resources, he's never been exposed against scouts. It's so rare on this map. What is Tato going for now? Is it Elite Skirm? Yep. Does he have to open Elite Skirm? But then Elite Skirm, Eagle, uh, is becoming a crazy unit against you. So you have to go for Knights then. And then you're spreading yourself pretty thin. If Tato had gone for the gold that he couldn't see, he would have lost those villagers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, really it, fortunate. Yeah, actually good that he did see it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Viper also diving underneath the tower. The skirms have bought Canero now. They're not elite, so normally not elite skirms in these situations could actually die to crossbowmen. And Tata's going to get the elite skirm. Really nice clear up. You killed every crossbow. He won't continue crossbow here. Cancel. You have eight seconds. Countdown's on. Four, three, two, one. He's not going to cancel it. He feels like he's got enough units. He needs to upgrade them fully. But you got to go knights now, right? You got to try it. Saracens, they're not seen as a great Knight Civ, but they do get full upgrades in Castle Age. And this is a map where you normally don't see Imp. So I could see it being a possibility. By the way, <laughs> Viper didn't see the villagers from Tato in the north. He did a full circle. He's scouting so much, but Tato's villagers remain untouched there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's trying to scout so actively with his units, as you can see. Yeah. He's sending another crossbow to the right-hand side that might die. Yeah. And... Oh, man. This is so important for Tato. Because Tato's actually going Cav Archers, which I like. Mm -hmm. Will Viper notice that on the mini-map? Same Vi scenario as in the Spiral game, though. The CA player will have the tougher task in the sense that he constantly has to micro. And if we move towards Imperial Age, just spreading those eagles around is so much easier to play. Yeah, yeah. Viper has a much better economy here. I think if you look at res collected and capture age, it'll say something a bit different because of the way the market's been used. Mm -hmm. But even still, that shows Viper has collected more resources. I love Viper's scouting. It's honestly really smart um, to know that Tato was going to play it this way. But he hasn't found many villager kills here in Castle Age. He's gone for more of the defensive side of things, but why not when you have the eco lead? He gets a very fast conversion on a cab archer. So now the Mayans have a horse and two TCs for him. Third TC coming up. He will defend his monk and he's even going with eagles to the gold. This could be the final blow to Tato. It's just, he's so far behind already. And he spread so thin on the map. He counted on Viper and not scouting those golds. But like... Either at the right-hand side or at the stone at the top. Yeah, but honestly, like, this is pretty far away from the base. Like, that is just sick from Viper to know to look for that. Mm -hmm. And understand how Tato chooses to play the Saracens. What a find. Well, Viper simply saw, okay, I raided two of your golds. You're not on the other one. Yeah. You have to collect it somewhere. Yeah. And he found it. Didn't find the stone, of course, but Tato is going to TC this gold now. And, uh, I mean, even the tiger's attacking Tato and could kill a villager here in a second. Now he saves it. 52 villagers versus 40. The Cav Archer mask can be good against Castle Age Eagles, though. If you get to, like, 20 of them, I think you established it's 19 to one shot a Castle Age Eagle the other day. So if that math is correct, he's pretty close to that number. 
ballistics needed though to at least do it against moving targets against standing it's still tricky right yeah. um because accuracy is still not pretty for the ca viper adding tc number four because he doesn't want the mobility of the cav archers to be an issue and he's he's building up some stone to eventually build a castle as well he also has the two relics at home but one of his monks in the middle get picked off Tato advancing forward. Meanwhile, Tato had to quick wall his wood line and did a very nice job there so the Eagles couldn't get in. Pretty nice one. CA is still going for the defense. Viper. Now a castle far away. Ooh, what are we thinking about plumes here? Yeah, plumed archers could be good. Thank God for Viper. He had the TC here. Feels kind of, sort of calculated from him, right? Knowing he'd be exposed here. I would love plumes from here. It's going to take time to build them up, and there's still elite skirms, but... I, I, I think what would make a lot of sense, though, is a Siege Workshop and a couple Scorpions. Goes for the farm now, Tato. <laughs> really, really taking advantage oh. from the damage output. Yeah, here. also lost, like, two Cav Archers there. He's just distracted because Viper's got Eagles in his eco. And Viper knows this. Viper's like, I got the TCs. He's only seen a second TC from Tato, and he's on four. Mm -hmm. So I think he realizes, especially seeing how many villagers kills he has, that he could just kind of hold, wait for the plume mass, and wait for the eco to win him this game. And he's just still actively like moving around on the map, like full control at the left hand side. Yeah. Funnily enough, Saddle went far enough, so Viper's not getting there, but. But just like expanding for Tato is so difficult. Yeah, and, and how many people are just going to be have cav archers at their base, lose a couple vills, and already just be leaving their base? It's like no, no, not enough, not enough. I can't be stopped right now. Not even going for uh, plumed archers, by the way, out of the um, mm -hmm. castle there. So the castles mainly protect resources. And he's finding so many vill kills with these eagles here. Poor Tato, twenty villagers down right now. And still not really at the crucial spot with the Cav Archers. Yeah, having them split obviously hurts, but he needs to have them in different spots because the Eagles are just playing so beautifully. Now right hand side, he runs into those Eagles a bit, but actually nice awareness. Yep. Has to react at home, fight burn underneath the TCs, killing Cav Archers, happy to do it. Happy to produce more Eagles, has the gold available as he drops TC number five now on the gold. And Tato, I mean, has, it feels like these villagers have spent more time inside the TC than out. And while that's the life that I would desire as a villager, that's not what Tato wants for his people right now. You're an inside person? <laughs> I'd be I'd be on my computer talking about Age of Empires in the, the right what window. What the others are doing outside. Plumed <laughs> uh, Archer's finally on the way from Viper now. Oh, poor Tato. I mean, is Cav Archer mass? Is... I think he could consider it a mass, right? At 20, that's a nice number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But 30 villagers behind here. Viper just simply traded away a lot of eagles to maintain his eco lead. Now has reached the point where I feel like he could kind of commit to anything. He could go full plumes, or he could go full cast lead eagles. Or both, mm -hmm. and still get the job done here. Yeah, right now he decides that both is absolutely fine. Just one cast production, not enough to fully commit to the plumes, but already wants to set himself up for the long run. Yep. Eagles into the wood line again from Tato. Tato reacting. Also, he will see the plumed archers. He didn't even know Viper had a castle. So, or maybe he did, but he's going to see plumes. And plumes are actually pretty good against other archers because they're also mobile. And they have uh, a bit of pierce armor. And, oh, looks like Viper even found the other villagers that I guess were looking for another gold or something. Just, Viper knew what Tato was going to do this game. And he left no opportunity there for Tato. He produced out of his barracks and his range, nonstop and futile, defended with the walls where he needed, and snowballed the ball, to, snowballed the game to victory from there. That was clinical from Viper. Uh, Tato, going for the, what was it, seven scouts and bloodlines? Couldn't find a single villager kill. Yep. Damaged archers a bit. But yeah, the moment he could really use them, he had to fight against like seven spearmen. Got to kill like three or four before the engagement, but still took so much damage. And then they didn't pay off for that crazy investment. Yeah, exactly. And it comes back to kind of what we'd said. If you go for a stable opening, 
or a range opening, you're only producing out of the range or the stable. Viper produced out of the barracks and the range all the time and was able to defend himself while also applying pressure. So you almost need to go like double stable or one stable one range and Tato tried the range, but it then becomes so tricky. Like how do you get the resources to get the skirmishers out while also making scouts and also getting upgrades? And like mm -hmm. in 2023, obviously the, the units themselves are strong for Mayans, Aztecs, and Incas. But I really think what makes those civilizations strong is this type of build. Just go fast feudal and consistently produce spears if it's needed or eagles with your archers or skirms. It's two buildings versus one in early feudal. And it if you're a player like Viper, who can macro really well behind it, all the pressure's at their base, and then you're untouched at home. It was really clean. Really clean. And then the multiple TC didn't go one TC all in, just boomed this one out and just spreads himself so thin. And that's where CA struggle. Look, I like the scouting for Viper. I know you have to look for gold with Saracens, but it's like, this is Land's Madness. There's gold literally everywhere, right? And the fact that he saw as much as he did was also really impressive. I think when he ended up scouting it, he had the lead. And so there's an expectation of top players when they have the lead are going to do that. But I think that's something that's super easy to take for granted. And that shows that Viper is really at his top level right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to see that for him. But obviously not for Tato. Tato now needs three straight wins to have a chance in the series or to win the series game number five now tato needs to win this one obviously in this best of seven otherwise he is his road will end here for this season he's gone for the malians we have the lithuanians for the viper both players going to go for water play here nearly just a bit of a difference approach we're going to have the lithuanians with the early lumber camp and then the malians just simply save lots of wood on their buildings yeah, and therefore earlier dock, earlier fishing ship, earlier food income, and everything lines up pretty nicely. And also, you have more gold out of your gold resources, which is nice because then you need to transition towards the center a bit later. And yeah, I'm really interested to see how this one will play out. Mm -hmm. We have seen some really interesting games in approach to see about the Viper. I remember the crazy game against Vivi. Yeah, seriously. Now, I'm, we've got to see the approach change a bit for everybody this season. Um, and I think the thing that is still a bit of a question mark for me with Viper is how willing is he to, to like, protect his villagers going to the middle sometimes because like i think against vivi it was like moving to the middle with the tc and towers without very much army and then against leary in the group stage he also came to the middle with chinese with like no army and yeah. almost lost the game there so um water is super important here though and i think both players will recognize that taking the middle stone of gold is valuable but the potential fishing eco on the outside is I don't want to say more valuable because it's a different resource but that is let's just say what gives you the best potential to fight for the middle mm -hmm. well also the question how are we opening unit wise malians actually don't oh, mind to oh, go men oh, oh, hold on what sorry to interrupt viper just passed tato's board that's the only board on the map uh it's very focused on the uh, dock at the top Oof. 30 HP? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, that could have been bad for Tato as well if his doc got denied. Pretty wild. I don't think we've seen a boar lame here, so I, I kind of freaked out about that. Sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it makes lots of sense, right? You still have enough food to so probably still go up, right, after pushing the deer and still having 1,000 food uh, under your town center, but your transition into Castle Age could have been really delayed then. Yeah. Yeah, so first time we've seen Lithuanians here, it was a rather early pick for Viper as well. Um, compared to, you know, had he picked this maybe for like graveyards where it's a bit more established as a pick. I think he's got options there. Also Kotra, we felt, right? Yeah. Or sure. Spiral. Yeah. So actually like a civilization that is viable on four different maps out of the pool and not even like a super wild pick to to see on land madness or something yeah it's true i think that that it might be why you value it so early too it's not like 
and it's necessarily number one on a very clear map is that it can be in like the top four for a variety of maps that really helps uh, in the draft tristan let's talk about the relic generation on this map hmm what what star sign is this <laughs> well um i'll be honest i've noticed the relics have been wonky at times and all mm -hmm. the eldorado games never had a situation where relics were an issue so yeah, 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 you know, yeah. we just never really you know got around to to making any changes. But yeah, there four of the five relics are on the right hand side, kind of between both players. But you know, relics are going to be a real point of focus if the Lithuanian player is making knights here. Huh. Yeah, it's weird. Bohemian great wagon. <laughs> yeah, it's like a constellation of sorts here. Um, Tato with the forward dock. Ooh. I like the strategy if that is indeed what Tato's going for. He just scouted where Viper's dock is. Walking a long but way with the Ville. Far away. Why didn't he just move down, basically? Where his scout is. Yeah, that's true. I think it could have had something to do with when he scouted. Does he? Other wild idea? Maybe wall in the stone? Oh. The wall in Viper's stone, yeah. I really liked it when Tato walled in the gold from um, ACCM in their quarterfinal. Mm -hmm. Like, ACCM had to make a decision then. Do I fight this off? Do I react to it? What do I do? And then ACCM ended up, like, going YOLO for the middle stone and gold, which may or may not have helped him there. But, yeah, this isn't the first time we've seen this, right? Because it takes so long to access the other player's fish, players will go forward with the dock so it's so easy to access their opponent's fish and you know right now viper's going for a different approach he's building up towards land buildings but if he doesn't know that tato has a dock down there i could see tato killing all those fishing ships at some point viper is on gold with two villagers so maybe some f fire galleys indeed are being planned goes for an archer range but with only two on gold this could actually be a spear skirm opening against a guy that doesn't even have a barracks true and and that's what viper's looking for so i think viper oh my god he actually went to dock himself oh, in no. the south what in the build oh which oh, which player because they both know <laughs> <laughs> oh man so now viper knows that now he should send more on gold docked you think viper should send more on gold he is going for trash units yeah but he needs more fire galleys yep Tato just walls in, keeps the villager protected, Viper hunting, and Viper does not have a second dock here because of you know, this whole disruption. Tato adding another dock at home. This is a great job from Tato. To make use of the Malian bonuses here, really smart. But the villager. Take a look, and Tato, that villager should never go down. I think you should always attack the fire galley there. Villager, ooh, tries to save itself. Yeah, you could tell, like, Tato did everything he could here to try and save the vill. But it goes down, and, and now you don't have a repair villager for the fire ship war. That could make life a little awkward. So let's... Yeah, I think maybe sending another one could be an option. And now the harassment and the speed on those spearmen could actually hurt quite a bit. But Viper taking a lot of damage. Yeah, um, he really is. It was hard for me to see the HP on the villager there. wonder if that was maybe the case for the players. Viper's fire galley will go down. Tatos does not in the south, so the pressure already kind of adding up there for Viper. Awkward situation. And Tato, behind all this, up to six fishing ships at home. Really but, solid. But still doesn't have any land army either. Just so tricky. Oh, well, man. Spearman Skirm is not the scariest thing, right? If Tato is constantly fighting with four villagers, that's not the worst thing for him in the yeah. world. Yeah, no, I agree with you, right? If it was archers, obviously... Yeah, that would kill villagers faster, but if it was archers, then Viper wouldn't have the navy. So it's just the pros and cons of the situation. I like the tower, though, because, you know, come, like, round four of the Skirmisher Spearman showing up to your eco, you're going to lose bills. Mm -hmm. So that at least protects you. Stable by Tato. He, he is skipping feudal. Oh, he, wow. he obviously doesn't want to go scouts. Yeah. I think scouts would be a little foolish. But Tato does lose a villager there. Viper has not lost... Any eco this game thus far. He's been the one who's who's had success. 
And Tato hasn't been able to kill Viper's fishing ships, but Tato has eight of his own behind this. So, you know, Tato's food income, a big part of this, right, as he wants to head up towards Castle Age. And I, I honestly, I really like Tato's position. I think if he could just hold now, which I think he can easily do, get up to Castle Age first. He has really good water eco and could maybe have knights in Viper's eco. He is adding oh, scouts. Vipers. Uh, I'm not sure if I like this. What are we achieving with that? By the way, Viper actually mining stone in the middle. I wonder if that's intentional from him. It, maybe he meant to take the gold. The villagers would be exposed as well. Tato could use his scouts to surprise Viper. Take those villagers that aren't walled in. In the center, yeah, maybe. Yeah. If you're ever wondering, like, what are the players doing at various moments, guys? It's because they're looking at water constantly right now. Viper in the south. Tato also in the east. Adding another dock. Tato here at the demo in the south. Not the best demo he's ever had. And Viper defends very nicely there. So his fishing ships still have not gone down. Viper's villagers in the middle. Exposed. Middle's always visible. And Tato gets some villager kills. Okay. Now putting some threat into the head of the Viper, maybe. The Ooh. second defensive tower and Carthage timings of both players will be really competitive. Yeah, Tato adding a tower, also losing a villager. Things got a little messy here. Navy count for Vipers higher. War galley upgrade will be later, though. And on the other side, wow, that was nice. Viper actually loses a fire, but nice patience with the demo on the left. I think he could have body blocked, taken some damage, and then could have saved his fire galley that way. Yeah, I just caught a glimpse of it. I wonder if he was trying because he did take some damage. Super close. Dock count. Tata will have three once he loses the dock in the south. So he's definitely added more there. And again, Viper on stone in the middle. So Viper is just building up towards a castle here, I think. Now we're only three at a time. Now the stable for the Viper wants to go for knights himself. And Tato could arrive with a lot of scouts that could become Lightcap. Yeah, that's a good point, Tato. It's a villager from Viper. Viper wasn't expecting it. You know, in the end, I really like the scout edition from Tato. I think it's given him a lot of value here. And mm -hmm. Viper's base is really open, so it's going to make Viper work pretty hard here. Yeah, yeah. Surprisingly high value. I thought uh, Tato would try to rush to Castle Age. Maybe could have clicked up a bit more, but simply finding three villager kills, confirming all the strategies from the Viper, gives more intel than yep. the blind castle all in. Also really like the tower. I, I think that's been nice for him. When he built it, it felt perfect. And remember, folks, fishing eco is going to be the most... Uh, the, pretty much the only food eco for most of these guys, too. They do not have farms yet. So I think War Galley upgrade needs to be the first thing you do. Obviously, Tats is going to make knights. It's not too bad. But if he could get some ships down there into Viper's food eco, it could be pretty strong. Scouts taking the engagement. Now next to the gold. Maybe a villager down here. Nah, pathing not in favor of Tato. Yeah, it's not. There's spearmen. Viper sees Tato is building a TC in the middle. Now, he's got a lot of spears, and he's clicked the Pikeman upgrade. Tato's TC could be denied. He needs quick walls. He gets the walls down. Beautiful Only four walls. Scums. Only four scums. Yep. So, I think the TC goes up here. The villager was weak. <laughs> but, okay, okay. I just thought, like, okay, that's a lot of damage output. Yeah. The Pike upgrade for Viper, though, is going to be tough for the Knights for Tato. And Tato will want some siege here. And again, Viper needs to maybe have his pikeman at home right now. He's dropping a TC at home. He quick walls in the middle. Big engagement on water on the right side. 50-50. That's close. And like have upgrade from Tato actually hitting Viper's TC. And Viper will lose villagers here. Uh-oh. Quick one not in time. More villagers coming. Oh, more knights coming in into the wood line. Tato in some beautiful moves here. Yeah, and Viper needs to really test his quick walling skills here. And boom, oh. house, palisade. But there's a block. Viper could still get a house down. He still does. How to deal with the light calf? Oh my goodness. Tato, though, still getting nice value from these attacks. He's got nice control. It looks like there's a bit more idle time for the Viper. And Tato has a TC in the middle, and Viper does not. And now the Siege Workshop that you wanted to see. Tato's not finished yet, Nilly. He was never finished when it was 3 1. Never. People thought he might be. I totally understand it because it's Viper. But remember, he was down 2 0 against ACCM in the quarters. 
I've won three straight. He can win three straight again. Um, you know, again, the fishing eco. Viper's kind of fishing dry soon. He's not going to have the efficiency there. And he doesn't have the stone for a castle, which is what he wanted. So I think Viper's plans have all fallen apart here. And Teto soon has enough stone. Yeah, true. Been on stone for a while at home. Also has farming eco. Viper doesn't have any farms. I think Viper's in big trouble here. Normally, it's like you take the middle or you take the water. Tato's actually has the water. And well, actually, bad timing on that comment. He might lose his fish uh -huh. here. <laughs> uh, and the fire gilly can't even fight back. <laughs> Surrounded. Uh, Viper, okay, not bad. Viper is 637 stone. He needs 13 more stone. And he doesn't have the gold to buy another 100. Oh, geez, the timing's so crucial here. Okay, Viper is enough. Does Tato see the Vils coming to the middle? Tato could be losing his fish right now. Viper's going to drop a very aggressive castle. Important conversion that has to happen. Knight goes in. Huh? Oh, this is so good for the Viper. Huh? Castle likely to go up. Oh! Oh, you're kidding me! Tato's distracted on water or somewhere. He's still going to lose out on water. Oh, jeez, man. He lost the monk and he lost the Meganel to that one knight from Viper. And Viper's castle will go up now. Oh, full disaster. Tato could have enough stone to build a counter castle pretty soon. Wow. Where is he building it? Nilly, though, the decision... Obviously, Viper, big moment there. The decision to place the castle where he did, which could lead to him losing the game even faster, is still so critical because it's it's a better castle that Tato is going to be able to place in terms of denying resources. Wow. Oh. Lightcalf will get the monk kill. Conversion back is happening. Tato will get some gold, but Viper will have way bigger chunk of the center. And I'm pretty sure if, and that's if, obviously, um, Viper can get Bodkin, that Tato can't take any gold. Oh yeah, potentially. But I think Fletching is worth it. One, is two, worth it for Viper three, to four, consider. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Botkin, I think even Fletching might be enough to yeah. reach most of the builds. Viper's still not mining any gold, actually. He's just mining the stone. He did create a Latus. And the Latus was wandering into Tato's eco. Tato tracked it. Super tough map to play. Super low eco. Res collected is going to be wild. I feel like this is actually where monks become so huge because every <laughs> unit is so valuable. If you have monks, being able to swing a unit to your side is so much bigger than this on this map. And in this situation than any other situation. Oh, Village is now bugging out into the castle a bit. Oh, this is ugly for Tato. Is he thinking about ramming, maybe? Petards? What ah. are the options? They could kill... I mean, Viper's food eco, for the most part, has just been fish. He's just start, started to add some farm. So Tato could counterattack now on water. It is two fire galleys against one fire galley. Massive <laughs> fishing ship advantage. Oh man, this is such a tight game. Yeah, it's just they just don't have much to work with, right? Uh, Latis and Pikeman finding kills at Tato's farming eco, though. And Tato is still got to be worried about the middle here. Viper building up stone almost feels like he wants another castle sooner rather than later. Like that monk there for Tato. If that monk can get into the TC. If he can get into the TC. If he can get into the TC! Oh, no. That would have been so nice. Well, there's some damage there. Tato got at least one relic. Scouted the second one to the right-hand side. Viper still tries to save his fish. Tato didn't rebuild any of his fishing ships. Mm -mm. He was two fire galleys away from... From winning water. Saving like seven, eight fire uh, fishing yeah. ships. And it was all at that moment. So I think if you're wondering where Tato was looking, he was looking at the water, which we know is so important. But the fact that Viper killed a monk and then killed a mangonel with the knight. The biggest story right now. But still, Viper no, no uh, fletching yet is a big story. Tato's fully on gold. He's got 26 on gold. Yeah, and I think Viper might not be playing with range mods, right? Otherwise, he would easily see. Like, okay, I could just build... Like, I could just invest fletching yeah. instead of into a second castle. I mean, maybe, but honestly, like, I don't play with a range mod. And the first thing I do when I get a forward castle down is fletching. It's like that is before anything else. Now, of course, everything in my base dies, and I don't have beautiful farms. 
but fletching feels like e more valuable than bloodlines even right now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. easy for us to say yeah. of course but a big deal right now the tato still has access to that gold area and he's expanding his farming eco as well viper's fishing eco hasn't been too efficient but he did just redock on the left side so that's a big thing for him uh Tato has a lot of fire galleys. Seven on the field, make it nine now. Well, Viper sits at one. Viper should lose his whole fish here. Yeah, definitely should. Not really investing. Tato might take time to find it, though, because you got to go past so many docks. Viper with some quick walls. Uh, Tato on Gabetto. And actually, Gabetto, a really good unit here, isn't it, Nilly? Like, it's yeah. high damage output. Could be great against the Latus. Could be great against Villagers. Yeah. Typically countered by range units, but obviously nothing that a Lithuanian player really wants to go for. Monk's okay-ish against it. And before hill forts, Nilly. For the TCs. <laughs> you just get nine range TCs. The Gabettos can't get yeah, anywhere near yeah, Viper's yeah. Eco. And Tata will also have some Monks. I, I'm still, the lack of fletching is killing me. Okay, he's getting it now. Finally. And then we will see what it will do to Tato's golden yep. come. Yeah. It's going to massacre villagers. I mean, Tato's made more progress. Ah! He goes for the town center first. Yeah, it's, it is going after some of the villagers as well. Yeah, maybe we're wrong. Maybe, I mean, he probably has, like, the little gray circle around the buildings. There goes Viper's Fish. Down. Well played, Tato. You know, it's been a, it's been a chill game for these miners in the middle. Just, like... Imagine the, the the stress of having to mine gold underneath enemy castles. But mm -hmm. I think Tato's army is superior right now. Viper doesn't have enough. He has two castles, Tato? but Tato's Gabetto army is insane. And he is taking... Uh, he just taken arson. <laughs> he is taking out the starting town center. <laughs> Viper genuinely might need hillforts here. That is so many Gabetto from Tato. He's getting hill forts, an upgrade that we never see as a non-troll. <laughs> well, I mean, I think we should see it more, right? I think it's actually a really good tech. But in this yeah. situation, if you're getting it, I, I think something has gone wrong. <laughs> Here we go. Viper's going to attack the ram. He's going to take out the ram. Now, when he garrisons in a second, he will outrage the Gabetto. And the Gabetto could yeah. all go down if Tata doesn't realize. And Tato, it feels like he sees. He knows. Yeah, yeah he sees it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's so uh... cool. What a fun tech. And Tato also had to convert uh, the latest. Oh my god, Neely! How many latest did he convert while that was happening? Look at the hill of Tato's farm. I can see four. That's Whoa, sick. that's sick. Must have traded away a bunch of monks for that, but that's really nice conversions there. Overall conversion count, 6 to 1. So those are most of his overall game conversions. Yeah. Tato now moved away from the gold. He does not have gold. What he does have is four relics. He's had more control of the right-hand side. The little constellation of relics helped him a bit. The Viper dropping a siege workshop. Viper, Viper starting to use lose his houses. Viper has, like, significant eco lead. But, and he has gold. But he doesn't have army. Oh, Gebetto, they should be so good. A Mangonel now for the Viper. Obviously, Gebetto, 40 HP. Yeah. Dice to a Mangonel shot. And that Mangonel comes out a really short distance. Uh oh Yeah. yeah. Uh oh and I'm scared, Tristan. Tato needs to leave here. Tato, you need to leave this place. You need to leave this place now. Oh, Viper should have popped. I think he should have popped to oh. the side and gone for the, yeah. the risky hit there. Yeah, it looked like it. Instead of trying Ooh. to conserve number... You just might need to wall this thing in in a second because there's latest coming and you just kind of knew it was going to happen. Mm -hmm, nice moves. Latest count for Viper very high now compared to what it was before. It's at 10. Big shot! Tato backs away. Nothing happened, Tristan. <laughs> you act like we should have just known nothing would happen. <laughs> <laughs> I got scared as well. Uh, uh. I think Eco Viper... Upgrades. Viper should go defend with Mangonels, and he should raid with Latus at this point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, like, Latus against Gabetto doesn't do anything for you. But Latus into Tato's eco could do a lot for you. Uh, what is the next... Is Tato preparing a Pikeman Ramgo against the town centers? I, I believe so. 
Viper's latest spreading out, looking for the Damn, farmers. Just killing those houses fast. Yeah, Arson. Really getting rid of all this. Arson. He's also getting plus two attack. These are gonna be fully upgraded. Cast Lage Gabetto. Actually, these units are insane. Yeah, the damage output, like melee damage against the building. Crazy. What is he doing? As if they had like extra bonus. Yeah, it really feels like it, doesn't it? Viper will take out a ram. Viper's late is still looking for damage. He's going to see Tato's monks. Viper might be like a little disappointed by the lack of relics on his side. He did get one, but he is also the player that has all gold and stone in the middle. Mm -hmm. I think Viper was expecting a ram push against his castle. That's why he has three mangonels behind his castles yeah. right now. It is a tight area though with the rams, right? So not that easy. But yeah, yeah, I think he might still be expecting it. But there's only one single ram yeah. on the map. Viper's latest in the back. This might draw Tato's Gobetto back here. It's quite a few kills there. There's not any pikes or anything. But actually, Ooh, actually see Tato research Tigui here. We could see both TC upgrades. That's sick, yeah. It would, it would make sense. Yeah, it would, it would. Absolutely. We don't have that many town centers though, right? Three in total for yeah. Tato. What a mm. sick game, Nilly. Like, who, who do you put your money on here? You put Viper on with more villagers? Or Tata with the Gabetto yeah. Ram play? I have to say, it is Viper for me. Simply having the middle, and Tato is like running out of steam with this army. Yeah, he is. Oh god, and the the, the uh, late Tessari are so strong, and Viper's expanded his economy, but it's time for Tato against the Hillfort TCs. He's gonna make a push. He's got Arson, he's got Attack, he's got Latest, he converted, and he's got a Ram. And he's got a Dream. But Just it's like... You're hyping it up as is as if it was a wonder, right? Yeah, he loses 15 villagers, but Viper can just fall back again. Yep. And Viper's killing so many villagers at Tato's base. Tato down to 50 eco. Viper with some crazy gates there to keep the latest away from his mangonels. And actually, like, Hillfort's really helpful in defense here, right? Anytime really Tato good. gets close to the TCs, I mean, we might even see the town bell for Viper with this many TCs. <laughs> and just defend the area with all with everything you've got. Oh man. And yeah, Lightus, the raid is getting cleared up now, slowly but surely. The Viper had 100 villagers while Tato sits at 40 and didn't really add more fish, right? He won the water so long ago. Yep. It would have been so easy for him to add 10 fishing ships. Yeah, I think just like 10 maybe. It's tough, like where I where I feel for Tato is his score's looking good. He did a lot of damage against Viper. He probably felt like maybe our eco counts even. And I don't need to defend myself because he can't make many latest, right? Like Viper's made, yeah, yeah. Viper had to have food eco for latest. So I think Tato didn't expect the counter attacks. And I think he felt like Viper's vulnerable in the middle. He only has gold. So let's just push his main TC, but that's far from the case. The score was actually super deceiving here for Tato. Yeah, but he should know, right? As Dave is telling us every single time, score is heavily influenced by who is winning water. Yeah, yeah. And Tato having the full control there, those were multiple hundreds, if not thousand points. Yeah, not to mention the, the upgrades as well, which would have played a role. But right now, score being even with a 50 eco difference is pretty nuts to me. And Viper... Now he's trying to determine, like, I think Viper actually feels like, I just killed so many bills, I've won this game, as long as nothing goes wrong. And I think he's trying to determine where Tato's going to go before he moves out, but as I say that, Latis, hesitate, but I think he's going to head towards the eco again for Tato. And pike numbers were higher before. 11 pikemen on the field and not all on the same spot, and 20 lighters, they will just find so many kills yeah, again. You, you can't counter this many lights us with pikeman you just can't and viper wins the game a game that he somehow like somehow won i mean it was the castle it was the moment with the knight the castle position from him was so critical and then the eco expansion he gets the job done tato just drops the gg well played wishes him luck um and an amazing series but at times similar to the other semi-final it always felt inevitable that one player was going to win today as good as tato was and that was the Viper. He's just so sick. Oh, man. Yeah. And uh, the games were probably a bit closer than the 4-1 storyline is really telling us. And that's yes. why you're watching the games. That's not why you're only check Liquipedia. <laughs> and 
Yeah, it, it felt like Tedo played really well, worth his top five in the world ranking that most of the people are giving him right now. Yep. And we got our dream final. Yeah, Viper versus Hera. It was the same final as the previous season where Viper won 4 1. And I'm going to say the same thing before I last season's final. I don't actually remember what I said, but could go either way, right? I was not expecting a 4 1 victory from Viper in last season. I was thinking if anyone won, maybe a 4 2 or a 4 3. Both players have shown really good view of how they see the maps. Both players have been able to had to fight through some crazy names and some crazy strategies against them. I expect Viper to be a little, to even feel the need to be a little bit more creative with where he plays certain civilizations. And that may, you know, help him or hurt him tomorrow. We'll see. Hera, though, I think you just know what you're going to get. You're just going to get consistency, aggression. Good decision making. And yeah, it should be the dream final in terms of high level execution for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only thing where we can fault the Viper, not even for his play necessarily, but for his draft for the wall. Right? Yes. The rest of it actually was really, really solid. And like, obviously, you won the other four games. And the wall, I think he didn't play like super bad. It's just like he went into it with a heavy shift disadvantage. Yeah, for sure. And you know, final thing I'll say, just to circle back to Tato, obviously the end of his road, but I'll say the same thing that I said about him with Yo. Amazing during the group stage, got lots of wins. Amazing during the playoffs. I mean, from an entertainment standpoint, Tato has brought maybe the best games and the best sets, especially in the playoffs, the 3-2 series win versus Doubt, the 3-2 series win versus ACCM. And then here, the 4-1 scoreline, not a true... It doesn't truly represent how good these games were and how close these games were at times. So, I mean, lovely player to watch. I wish the best for Tato. I hope he's happy with the season, and I'm sure he will be. Um, but yeah, uh, while there a lot was undecided and a lot was uncertain at times throughout the season, Nilly, we have ourselves a Hera Viper final. Mm -hmm. It seems like we end up in that situation a lot these days. <laughs> Well, they are considered to be the top two in the world, right? And if the bracket is working out, if we had some other movements um, in the brackets, they could have faced each other in the quarterfinals. Yeah, if if Andy would have won Group C, if Harold wouldn't have snagged first in his group, like for a couple weeks in group stage, it looked like it was going to happen. Uh, mm -hmm. Then, yeah, they might have faced in the quarters. So um, similar to maybe, you know, the leary Hera matchup happening in the quarters. It just all depends, like, where people end up falling into place. But, um... I really enjoyed the cast. I had a lot of fun, especially with the build-up too, because we got to do a lot of other casts together over the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. So I felt like mm -hmm. having already discussed strats with you and like viewers already hearing us discuss strats, I think it added a lot of value today. So thank you for the uh, the good fun, my friend. What time tomorrow? Uh, I think it's 16 GMT tomorrow. So that should be when the final begins. And there will be an announcement, I heard. Uh, there will be an announcement after the final. Not before. Okay. okay. Someone said, Hera vs. Viper was the announcement. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> no, I guess that, that'll be hype as well. But uh, yeah, announcement will be after the final.